In this video, we're going to talk about King Spawn's Chest of Chaos and Spawn's journey through tough choices. This is like King Spawn's Battle for Earth and Spawn's unfinished business and his magical quest beyond reality, man. It's a whole lot of alliances and frightening foes. This issue has it all, man. So yeah, all right, my brothers and my sisters from another Mista. This is a comic book review and breakdown of King Spawn issue number 1 through 25, brought to you by rated comics now before we get into the content timestamps are in the description if you wish to go from issue to issue or if you wish to watch this entire video in its entirety in its one sitting hey by all means you my boy and i got you and i know you're hungry like that also don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com for some really cool limited print rated comic exclusives to add to your comic book collection support the art support the industry also if you like the content we're throwing up you know what to do don't forget to like and subscribe to rated comics youtube channel you'll thank me for it later but with all that being said hey let's get into the content We start this issue off with this question. Anyone here know what the Bible is? A teacher named Mr. Reynolds asked the students, a child responds saying that his mom says it's like a comic book. Oh, I know there's lots of monsters I think Mr. Reynolds says to another student. Mr. Reynolds teaches his students that the Bible is love and he reads them his favorite passage. Before he reads, he gets his cell phone and gets something up to send something on it. His student tells him that his phone is beeping and he tells his students, happy shall he be Boom! This book literally opens up with an explosion on page two. Then the narrator finishes the passage, who taketh and slams thy little ones against the stones. This is how they always start, targeting and feasting in spectacular fashion as they can on those two innocent to defend themselves. To me, that's referencing the children. We get another visual of how big this explosion is as the narration continues. The saddest part is, Humanity is unaware that heaven and hell have been attacking them for centuries, sometimes for sport, sometimes for purpose, to draw out their enemy. There goes our, there goes our boy Spawn, or at least his hand. Spawn is at the graveyard having a conversation with Jessica Priest, aka She Spawn. Hey girl, hey. Her contacts were part of this investigation show no prior record for that teacher. The teacher taught 30 years without the incident, so Spawn replies with, so he gets to go to the pearly gates with his arms full of trophies, she spawn doesn't take too kind to the children being called trophies. Spawn clarifies trophies to them, not to me. Spawn is trying to decipher who is behind this explosion at the school. So Mark communicates with Spawn saying he sees no connection to the shadow players with this explosion. He believes this was done by a person. Spawn tells Mark to look over it again. Despite looking over things for the sixth time, she spawn tells Spawn to ease up on Mark and he's doing the best he can. Spawn tells Jessica that she's a mother and asks what would you be going through your head right now if you were on the other end of this? And ends with why something this horrible has to happen in the first place. She Spawn tells him because mankind does stupid and horrific things every day. Mothers have been grieving for centuries at the senselessness of their lost children. What makes this tragedy so unique? Spawn answers with, it's a message someone is trying to send to me. Spawn holds up a piece that she that he found in the rubble. Spawn explains that it's Sigil. It's a symbol that tells the whole prophecy of what the person is doing. Spawn hasn't deciphered it completely, but he knows that it won't be the only attack and he knows who he has to go to. She Spawn realizing that a bunch of kids died just to get their attention weighs very heavy on her emotionally. She feels the least they can do is pay their respects at the funeral. This page shows how the news and the media airways are reacting to this incident, and it's some heavy stuff in here. If you wish to purchase the comic, link in the description, by the way. Spawn feels that he's against time to bring vengeance to the parents of those who lost their children. The sigil, that piece he showed she spawned earlier, says there is a list of files with names of every shadow player stuck here on Earth. The angels and demons hiding in human skin on Earth, and Spawn still believes the teacher was one of those shadow players Despite what Mark said earlier, in this dark and eerie room, we see this man on the phone with the senator telling him how to spin this explosion story. He tells the senator over the phone that he doesn't want the narrative to be only about grieving parents and innocent children. He throws in a threat for good measure to make sure the senator sticks to the plan. In short, he wants the senator to say that the school teacher was a law-abiding citizen, an inspiration for others, and your, and your heart breaks for the loss of those children, but you're considering forming a new committee in the school safety that add a bunch of sentimental words after that. He hangs up the phone and this man gets down to business with Miss Lafayette. 
we find out this man's name is Mr. Raphael, an archangel. For referencing the Bible earlier, there is some, that is some name for a mistress. Not to mention, this confirms Spawn's suspicion. Spawn enters the room aggressively. How disappointed would your masters be if they saw your loyal servants in the arms of their enemies? The man tells Spawn that they had a deal and you shouldn't be here. Spawn wants Mr. Raphael to read the cycle. Miss Lefithan tells him that not to listen to Spawn and that he has no dominion here. Spawn quickly challenges that thought and tells Mr. Raphael if he wants his satanic mistress back in one piece, he's going to do what Spawn asks and decipher that cycle. He reluctantly agrees to do it. And by the way, if I'm saying that name wrong, comment below let me know. I, I, I'm just going along with it. Turns out it's a blueprint and Spawn wants to know how it ties into the bottom. A group of terrorists of some kind and some files but the biggest part to all this is they're following Psalms 137 in the Bible about killing children to get their God to reveal themselves. Spawn wants to know who's directing them, but he can't tell. Spawn calls Mr. Raphael on his bull jive and tells him he's got three seconds before Spawn gets to three. The name that is revealed is Metatron. Spawn asks if he's on Earth. Turns out in the previous issue, Spawn trapped some heavy hitters when he locked the dead zone. He adds if propaganda is getting to people online and social media that Metatron is dictating it. Spawn asks for the location of this Metatron. It is revealed that it's the same place where hell birthed Spawn. Let's go to New York, baby. So a little bit about Metatron. He was born human, but somehow conned his way into becoming a god, handpicked by the angels. The only human to ever do so you con God? Okay, you don't say. I'll go with the story. But why did it take him all this time to make his move? One of his goals was to bring the head of a hell spawn to the altar of God. He actually liked serving. But why use children as bait when there are plenty of adult targets to use? Even the mama knows this man is sus and gets her child away from him. We get a demonstration of Metatron's ability when this brother right here asks him for spare change and converses with him without an invitation. He telepathically gets into his head to the point of explosion. Yep, that's right. Take it all in. That just happened. If Metatron's whisper can do this to human ears, no telling what it can do to symbiote covered ears. Sam and Twitch at the crime scene not certain how to go forward with all this. As seen as they are, this is just this just hits different. I love how they made a call back to who do we call with this kind of stuff happens. I don't know. Let's just call Batman. He might know what to do with all this. <laughs> Joking aside, Spawn goes down to an abandoned construction site that sits atop of a dead zone. His plan was to hide this portal even though it's invisible to the naked eye. Spawn sees a light beaming and is suspicious about it because it's just too obvious. He believes it to be a trap. Spawn is shocked to see what his eyes see. Metatron body is splattered everywhere and body literally ripped limb from limb. Just when a threat was introduced, you took it away from us. This is letting Spawn know just how powerful this guy is. Or girl. Metatron was just a pawn. Spawn wonders who the hell is doing this. Meanwhile, 200 miles north of Brooklyn, we get to see this cult and their motive. In Leviticus, he says, eat the flesh of your sons. And in Psalm 137, the Lord implores us to do what? They chant, smash the heads of the little ones. Okay, I I'm done with this creepy page. Let's get on with it. We get this guy sitting on this throne, if you will, with skulls on his armrest. And so my flock will leave a pile of bodies so high, the entire world will mourn. And that's when the king will reveal himself all hail King Spawn! I love how we're just left in mystery on who this King Spawn mofo is. We don't know, but obviously I don't feel cheated out this book at all because it's just a heck of a read. As always, I got to leave a little meat on the bone here. King Spawn is absolutely a must read for all Spawn fans. For those who've been looking for a way to get back to reading the character or jumping for the first time, this story feels like a great place to do either. And you can also sub to this YouTube channel as well because we cover Spawn issues as well as other cool comic book related reviews and content. King Spawn, number one, also features a few backup story stories that introduces other characters that tie into the universe of Spawn, such as Haunt, Nightmare, The Hero, and more Gunslinger Spawn, which I'm personally looking forward to myself. So I only gave away 50% of this book. The other 50% are the other backstories that you guys will thoroughly have a good time reading. The potential for awesome storytelling is something that excites me to read further issues. There's so much to be had here. This issue opens up with a very scary looking man giving us a sermon. 
There is a cultish group preparing to enact terrible atrocities on the world, so it seems, and Spawn's time is running out to stop him. And that person is Billy Kincaid, now known as Kincaid. He's talking about the new leader seeing the righteousness of our goal, and he will commune with you in a physical and spiritual way. This new leader will also be like us, willing to make a sacrifice of young souls that so badly want to be servants in the new order. Why do I have a feeling that this will play a part later? King K goes into a backstory how Spawn embarrassed him serving him up like a stuck pig, imprisoning his soul in deep darkness. But that changed him and transformed him into the master they now follow. It also gave him a doorway into the future and there goes the cult cheering him on. We see Al Simmons aka Spawn pondering and thought from the events of King Spawn issue number one. You can check out that review if you haven't. Six kids and Metatron all dead just to get to me out in the open. That's what Spawn says. His frustration is clearly visible as Jessica, she Spawn, and Mark look at him as he grows more frustrated. Jessica goes to talk to Al and he doesn't see how she can be useful and has an outburst. He doesn't like outbursts, but given his frustration and dub questions, as he calls it, are just amplified in this specific scenario. Al walks away and Mark doesn't do a damn thing about it. Jessica calls him out on it. The death of those kids weigh heavy on everyone, issue number one, but all they can do now is try to prevent another tragedy from happening. Jessica goes outside to see if she can offer some advice to him. Al was not looking for any at this time, but she's gonna give him some anyway. She tells him, you're not in this solo, so stop acting like you are. Give us a chance. She asks Spawn about the sigil. It's the symbol that tells the prophecy of what the person behind the killings is planning. Issue number one callback. Jessica asks Spawn to give it to Mark. Since he's smarter than the both of them and he can run it through his computer matrix and they can go about handling business. Al refuses and turns into Spawn. She calls Bulljive on Spawn telling him that he needs the both of them and to get over himself. Otherwise, why is he keeping them around? She gives him a compelling, no nonsense speech about bringing closure. He agonizes this for a moment and agrees to let her help him. Now here is a sweet old granny in a sweet old neighborhood. She's the kind of granny that tries so hard to please others while taking on more responsibilities than her age needs to. Upstairs, there's some boom boom going on. In the name of the prophet King K, these two are having a pre-cult ambush and sex before the scheme of the day the next day. The prophet instructs Thomas, the dude, to wear the helmet during their first time. Not that helmet, the one on his head. Not that head, the other head. Granny intrudes and he tells her they were finishing Bible studies, the book of Psalms, and they're almost done. Obviously sweating, it's more like they were getting some. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll keep that joke in there. Going on with the review, in DC we see Spawn looking patriotic. I'm not sure this symbolizes something, I believe it does. He narrates that the book of Psalms has more prophecies than any other in the Bible. All talk about making a new world. Leaving the past behind and crowning a new king, Spawn concludes that if there is a roadmap, DC might be the beginning of their slaughter, or a very crude way to draw them out in the open. Either way, they're leaving clues to draw Spawn out in the open. Spawn speaks to Mark over the intercom, questioning that it's been two hours and is Mark sure about the stakeout. Turns out he's 100% positive as the sigil had been encrypted, this location is where they're at now. Since tomorrow is a more important date, being that it's a two day event, Spawn didn't want to take any chances and showed a day earlier. Spawn tells Mark to get himself and Jessica somewhere safe and he tells Mark that he doesn't need their help tomorrow. His reason for this is he believes he needs someone that he can trust more than them. Spawn is really going through some things right now and he feels he can trust Terry, but deep down he feels Terry won't want anything to do without. Despite that info, they have a meeting anyway. Talk about trust issues despite Mark helping Spawn out with this idol. Just a short summary with Terry and Al for those who may not know. Al and Terry were good friends in the military, but when Al died and married his wife Wanda and gave her a child, things were never the same. Terry gives Spawn a partial list that his friend from the CIA gave to him. It contains what the government knows about the shadow players. In other words, the shadow players have infiltrated a government agency. He warns Terry to be very, very careful. The rest of this dialogue between the two is very impactful and powerful. They both have something to lose from it, and this shows it's in her best interest to work with one another, despite their history. The next day, Al and Terry are at the steps of the Capitol building. He is not sure what he is supposed to look for, aside from an intruder who is young and armored which is going to be a tough to spot in the crowd full of young individuals. The two kids from the grandmas get ready to do the act. 
Not that act, the other act. Terry notices them and calls to spawn. They call for everyone's attention and they tell the crowd that their deaths will be for the glory of the cause, for the future and the future king to come. That is an awesome moment where Spawn uses his cape to block the bullets from the crowd. As always, I got to leave a little meat on the bone for you guys if you wish to purchase this comic. Link in description, by the way. I like how they showed Spawn's inability to work with others, which helps show he's got some growing to do, that he can't be a loner hero. Much of this book deals with Spawn's frustration with not being able to solve the mystery of who is pulling the strings and maybe rushing in too quickly. She, Spawn, and Mark are clearly on his side, but if he had it his way, he'd do this alone, quickly and quietly. But he does need them both, in my opinion. Meanwhile, the enemy gets a bit more fleshing out, specifically the two of the faithful that does the main villain's bidding. This all leads to an attack on, cap on the Capitol building. It's quite clear that the build-up to this attack is meant to drudge up the fear and chaos we all felt on the first issue of this book, but it doesn't feel cheap. It's more like a means to show how haunting this villain is. In the end, Spawn has made a sucker and it'll be interesting to see how Spawn grows from it. He did the unthinkable and fulfilled King Cade's prophet's prophecy. Hint, King Cade called it out in the beginning of the issue. We begin this issue with Spawn and Terry putting photos on the wall, trying to connect the predators to the victim. Spawn talks about it, it's like we're back in the jungles where it all started like we're soldiers again. Terry tells Spawn, that thing said he wanted you there so the public would see that you'll kill kids. And that's referencing King Spawn issue number two. You could check out that review. And the fact that you were the last person to see my daughter and won't tell me where she is, doesn't give me much confidence, Spawn. And Spawn gets pissed. He's like, what are you insinuating, Terry? Insinuating? I'm asking you where's Simon. Why won't you tell me? Because you're some superhero with some dark secrets. You're just Al Simmons to me. Same corpse I saw back in the jungle. Damn, you were re reminding the dead that he's dead? Spawn gets pissed about that and like pushes him back into the desk. And he's like, you know what, Spawn? What is it? Are you using her so you can get back at me? Or are you just like going to war and you don't care who it hurts? He's like, I like war. And then Terry kind of, you know, snaps back into reality. Like, look, man. And Spawn gets a flashback memory of, you want to know what I've become? I've become angry, angry at everyone and everything that's ever tried to control me. That's what my country did to me. They murdered me so I could become a pawn of some BS war between God and Satan. I didn't want any of it. And that's what Spawn's telling him. And you know how they try to get to me? Do you know? They killed Wanda. We both lost a wife because of them. And they'll kill Cyan too if they find her. That's not gonna happen. This is a war. If you wanna try stopping what you're doing, then get mad. But don't direct it at me, direct it at them. They're your enemy, not me. And then Mark comes in and says, hey, sorry to bar Jim, but I need to show you guys something. Spawn's like, man, this better be good. And Jessica's looking on screen and it's uh, different terrorist attacks happening all at once. And it's mentioning Psalms 137 about killing children. An ice cream truck is mowing down pedestrians in Toronto. Another group in Uganda kidnapped a bunch of girls from school. Someone blew up a temple in Iran. It's spreading everywhere. And then when Jessica ran the plates in the ice cream truck, they belong to some guy who's been dead for years. And Spawn knows exactly who it is. It's Billy King K. Jessica tells Spawn, Mark also discovered another Spawn, a feral Spawn in Russia. It's causing riots and it's breaking out everywhere. Spawn's like, I'll deal with that later. Jessica, you go to Uganda. Mark, you go to Canada. Remember, these are crazy. These are crazy. They'll kill kids. You guys got to protect them at all costs. I'm going to kill an old friend. And then Spawn looks at Terry. He's like, hey, Terry, back in the day, you were good on the radio. I need you to keep us connected and run the show. You, you think you could do that? He's like, yeah, just like old times buddy and he's like nah man this is bigger than that everyone and whoever resists they'll just annihilate that's why your daughter's name was on the dossier they're making their their hit list and no one is off limits to them no one and terry's like oh man it's about to be a show so the license plates on on the ice cream truck was a clue from king kid he wants spawn to track him down and spawn's like okay back then it was easy now, if he wants me to track him down, he's not afraid of me. That means his power has grown. Same with the influence that'll protect him. Children are nothing but toys to them and they'll be played with any way they choose. And then these two guards in tuxedos like, he's here, just like King K he said he'll be. And the spawns like, you protect these monsters? He's pissed, they're blasted at him. I love this image of Spawn's cloak just smashing this guy through the car. And he tells him, before you both die, pray I don't hand over your children to them. Rage has consumed Spawn. He enters the house 
and the Fourier is suspiciously empty spawns follows the sound clunk 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 he walks he travels clunk clunk he discovers his kid and he recognizes his kid from the photo from all the children who died in the school blast that's referencing king spawn number one and these people are chanting behold our miracle for he will be forever ours and this dead boy soul has literally been trapped by these religious monsters for the purpose of making him their slave no one notices spawn except for this child i know you you watched my mom bury me are you here to call me a miracle too and spawn's like no i'm not and these people turn around recognize and spawn the king he's here and spawns and this is a heck of an awesome image right here i'm here to avenge your death he feels his chains flinching like a hurricane unleashing this unforgiving attack chains just go and he just massacres everyone in the room except for these children and spawn unleashes a slaughtering of his own yelling out they were children and there's no amount of pain or punishment he can deliver to them that will atone for their unspeakable actions for that slaughtering and this is a disturbing image with the kid holding the crown yes hurt them more so you can get your crown meanwhile in uganda terry's talking to jessica like what's going on in uganda Come talk to me and she's like i'm with a bunch of kids under harry fire they're attacked their school i can't change into my symbiotic she spawn suit in front of them because they're already scared in canada medieval spawns getting to work and he's like cowardly heathens you want to hide from me and then this guy's like prepare to die fascist and he clicks on the button tick tick tack tack an explosion happens and it's just all out going out and he looks to communicate with Al. Al, can you hear me? Al, he does hear him, but he's too focused on something else. And he's like, King K, where is he? Show yourself. And these clonk clonk footstep sounds are happening. And you can tell by that look in Spawn's face when he yells out, show yourself. It's like anger, but a little bit of fear because you don't know what you're going to expect. And then Terry cuts out the audio knowing that any distraction could get Spawn killed. And he tells himself, I hope you know what you're doing, Al. As King Cade emerges from the shadow, Spawn knows things will be harder this time around. And when he emerges, look at this physically imposing King K. This is like some kind of stuff right there. And he is pissed. King K is like the Lord once told us, assemble the people to hear my words so they may learn to fear me for all eternity. And that fear, dear Spawn, is the thing I feed them so they will obey everything I say. I'm okay with you killing all the people from before. I will find more, but the boy is mine. This is not going to be that easy of a fight. And before I go any further, I got a reference back to Spawn, issue number five, because that's what Spawn did to Billy King K the first time around. And that was when he was just a mere human. Now that he's been empowered or whatnot or have these new demonic powers that we don't know what kind of power level he's running yet he's out for revenge Woo! but spawn flies back and he's like oh my gosh and this really is star of spawn shock spawn is like dude this guy's got some power here you know and it's like sadistic evil power that made him into some kind of demonic beast and the kid is like is he gonna save me king Cade's like no he's here to destroy you and everything else in this world but you can stop him right Yes, I'll stop him just like he stopped your soul from leaving because he shut down the portals to heaven and hell close by him and dax him in his face. And that is some power punch right now. He's the reason for Psalms 137. His power kills children with ease. He can even kill you, Simon. Stomps on his head, kicks him, bites him bites him yes he bites him and he's like he bites it because i need your soul not him i need to feed on you king kate is going to work you could clearly see the pain in spawn's face as he tries taking all of spawn spawn feels the pain and power and the evil darkness that king kate is filled with but guess what that darkness is a thing that spawn can use because it's something that he can control too so he sends it back to attack king k to begin eating him alive from the inside and once the symbiote's inside it just rips him apart so he can explode out of him you can just see the pain with king k and spawn goes up to simon simon he's like nope the crown doesn't fit the king and he's pissed it's like what the heck is going on here spawn tells Simon, we have to leave i need you to come with me would you be okay with that He's like, well, he said you want to hurt me. He's like, I know, but the bad guy said lies all the time because he's one of those guys. So you're not going to hurt me. No, I'm not going to hurt you. So he was trying to hurt me. Yes, and because of that, we need to go. And King K snaps his chain. You heard the boy put Spawn into the floor with his face down first. And this is a disturbing image, but you cannot take your eyes off of it. Ripped inside out, insides showing, exposed. 
put on the damn crown and the boy is like oh my gosh it fits it fits and spawns in submission and we gotta end the book right there my thoughts on this book is <laughs> it first of all it started me this is a great book for halloween king spawn is just entertaining scary and really fun i think this is a must add to your shelf not because it's a great story but you will have fun reading this over and over and over again i'm telling you link in the description if you guys want to get a copy of king spawn issue number three now we begin this issue exactly where issue number three left off with Spawn's battle with King Cade. And King Cade is like assembling himself like the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. King Cade is assembling himself, telling you cannot hide from your future Spawn. The only way to prevent that is to take the throne and leave this earth permanently whether you want it or not. And Simon, the little boy who's dead, was like, oh wow, the sigil, do you see it? And King Cade's like, I do, child. I see everything. The question is, does Spawn see it too? And in a flash, Spawn sees an entire future unfold where he sees himself dragging others into battle, foreshadowing a future issue. He sees a lifeless Terry on the cross, a world where brothers are at war with one another, and universe waiting to see what he does. We see Spawn sitting on a skull throne with horns protruding out of his head, and Spawn is lord of all of it. And in King Cade's like, em embrace your destiny, Simmons. Isn't it exciting? But for now, that is not Spawn's focus. Destroying the monster in front of him is because nothing will ever justify the slaughter of children. And he takes like the chain, rips the chain up and pokes it right in King Cade's eye. And it's like, is this brother even feeling any pain? He's just laughing at it. And King Cade's like so desperate to protect. What? The innocent? Is that what it is? Innocents don't exist. You should know that by now. We've all been corrupted. Every one of us and you can alter this path. And his spawn knows it's a trap to unleash his fury. But you know what? He's gonna unleash it anyway. Spawn is more than willing to fall into this trap. And he just pounds away, pounds away, pounds away. And look how it gets blurred and distorted in the green around Spawn's eyes and mouth. He can tell this brother is furious! And he punches King Ken all the way until there's nothing left of his enemy but dust. I'm like, dude, that's freaking vicious, bro. And even the kid's like, well, damn, Spawn, did you have to hurt him so much? Yeah, I did. He was bad. And Simon's like, well, you forgot about your crown, don't you want? He's like, I don't want that crown. And the voice comes up saying, you don't know what you want, Spawn. Not yet. And the Simon's like, is that my mom? He's like, oh, that is not your mom, my man. I know who that is. And it's a mystic woman, the Oracle. She works for Gaia. Legend has it, Gaia has many names, but the name that we most have settled on is the term Mother Nature as a way of defining her effect on the world. But for Ea, she has been watching heaven and hell battle over, endlessly fight over the souls of humans. But each time she has returned to teach them a lesson, very little life was ever spared. So this girl, the Oracle tells Spawn, you guess what, your world is on borrowed time. My mistress Guy is coming and when she comes, her judgment will be harsh towards those with power who stood idly by. And Spawn's like, is that a threat? Nah. Just an observation, then your master is blind, says Spawn. Oh, I disagree. She's been watching quite intently about this war and how it tears apart her planet, her garden, greed, human, or otherwise they led to poisoning your air and lands. Unlike so many of you, Spawn, she will not remain idly by. And she's wiped you guys out once before. She will do it again. And all that you fought for will be for nothing. And then Simon was like, including me and my friend, Mr. Spawn. Including you, Simon, Cyan, Terry. Your friend Spawn here locked all the dead zones wanting to keep evil away, but he never stopped to think that he'd also trap every human soul hoping to leave this earth. Instead, he cursed him to an unwanted purgatory. Except one has found the way, haven't they? And soon, he'll transform into your greatest enemy, and that's foreshadowing Spawn right there. And even Simon's like, oh my god, I see it. He's not by himself. There's so many of them. I think we should go, Mr. Spawn. The Oracle's like, hey, Spawn, they will tempt you. Offer everything you wish for to get the child. Well, Spawn's like, they ain't got nothing to offer. Well, we both know that isn't true. If you really want to protect the kid, he'll have to come with me. I thought we were friends, Spawn. No, we weren't friends, little guy. We were just pawns. Take care of him. And as Spawn reflects, Simon said them. He saw multiple beasts coming this way. But now that I know, let them come. And he calls out for medieval, medieval Spawn. Medieval Spawn, do you read? And he's like, yeah, I do, Reed. what's up? Well, that van over there, clear out the citizens, check out the van that may be explosive, but be careful. What do you see? Medieval spawns like, okay, there are metal boxes, 
It sounds like surveillance. It has something to do with Psalms 137 repeating the same things over and over again. And Spawn deduces someone is spending big money over on this on this attack in this organization. Medieval Spawn sees on the screen there's a creature that is seen, and that's referencing Spawn issue 316. And Spawn tells her, I need you to get out of there. I'm sending coordinates to teleport to Jessica's position. So seconds from now, Medieval Spawn will appear in Uganda near the forest outside of Kampala where Jessica has turned into She Spawn. She's trying to rescue a group of young children racing for their lives from a legion of Psalms 137 members. So as she's protecting these kids, these kids are like, are we gonna die? No, I promise you, no one's gonna get here. Do you know how to use this? Take this, you see anyone you don't know, Pull the trigger. That's all you got to tell a kid. And minutes later, that child does exactly that. She spawns, uses a gunfire to cover. She slip away so she can hunt down her enemies. Now she has skills, her strengths. She can easily break their bones. But for others, she does far worse by punching this brother through the head. And you got brains and chunks. Oh my God. <laughs> this is awesome, man. So medieval spawn teleports like, Jessica, you all right? Well, we could have used you sooner, but you're here now. So Terry on surveillance is seeing these 137 terrorist snipers are surrounding them and he tells Jessica Medieval Spawn that they're a threat. You guys are surrounded. Get out of there. Can you hear me? And they can't hear him and they don't hear his warning. She Spawn and Medieval Spawn may survive the gunfire, but the kids won't. She Spawn has grown used to not having Spawn on her side. All she can hope for is now is that Medieval Spawn is a worthy replacement. But before she can find that out, Vengeance has arrived in the form of a pissed off Spawn going ham, shook, fuck, fuck, and just going ham on these terrorists and he's and she spawn tells these kids all of you go run hide i'll come for you soon actually it'll be sooner than what she thought now you just see all this horror and blood and gruesome brutality going on even she spawns like spawn as this is not like you bro now spawn hasn't been back in africa for a long time the oracle said everything that psalms does is to manipulate him first they bring him back to his childhood neighborhood then it was washington now here the same jungle that spawn took his last breath as al simmons where they killed him someone's messing with his past and they know this is where he also became spawn so spawn tells him search for the bodies look for anything connected to botswana Botswana, just do it! He's like, when you're done, get corners from your visual on that spawn with the black spikes, the, I guess it's plague spawn. I'm not sure if I remember that correctly. I'll meet you guys at the base. We're heading to Russia. But spawn's already gone and he disappears. And even medieval spawn foreshadows, he makes it sound like he's some bloody king already. Back in spawn's base, he says he gets it. This is all about the Genesis, how all the lords had their history. That's what Psalms 137 is doing. They're bringing me back to his origin story. But the only person that knows that story is Terry. As Spawn tells Terry, grab her things, we're going to Botswana. I think this is an awesome issue, man. Each issue of King Spawn, in my personal opinion, gets better and better. I love how they get more horror elements to it, and they add the mystery element to it, too. I'm not sure how many more issues of King Spawn there, there's going to be, but I'm looking forward to this. This is an exciting read, and if you guys do decide to purchase this comic, link in description. Support the art, support the industry. This issue is... I can, I'm definitely getting jiggy with this. We begin this issue where issue number four left off, where Spawn tells Terry we got to go to Botswana. So we get a flashback of Botswana many years ago. This was Al Simmons before he became Spawn. His mission was to find the head of an army using children as soldiers, then executed with prejudice. And pretty cut and dry mission, right? Then again, this is the military. He knows that how civilians like to look at the world, that things like war are simply just good and evil, but it really isn't. It's not really cut and dry, it's complicated. There's always more dead and more bodies being dead than what's planned. And these missions seem to be based on reasons to save lives and something more irrational. As certain government bodies, they wanna keep gas prices cheap, land titles in proper hands, or here in Botswana, that diamonds remain readily available. That's the trade here, that's the whole point of this war. So the specific warlord in this territory thinks he could trade those jewels for political power. We see Spawn looking at a picture of a kid that's his target. And at his destination, when he arrives at this hut, he knows there's no one guarding the door and the door is open. This is a trap, but he's been through this shit before. So we see this kid talking and he tells whoever's on this intercom, we had a deal, remember? You said you'd get rid of Botswana's defense in the area. Why are you now? Spawns outside, tells the kid, puts his hand up in the air. Uh, don't mess with me, kid. Well, who are you talking to? When? When is the guy? General Wynn is Simmons' commanding officer. He's the one fronting all this? And then Spawn notices a guy's mutilated hand that this Psalms 137 Bible verse written on it. Kid tells Spawn, don't shoot. I love America. We give you diamonds 
to your soldiers. It's a trade. Al Simmons like, what? No, you send kids into war. That's what you do. The kids don't go into war. They're volunteers. Are, are, are you the help? Are you the one being sent here to help us out? And that's when Al Simmons realizes this kid is just a pawn and he doesn't even know it yet. So he gives him his gun and tells the kid, shoot anyone that shows up like me. Shoot him before they ask any questions. Just shoot him. Do yourself a favor, kid. Al realizes he's been sent on too many missions in too short a time. And with each assignment, Simmons' mental health is further stressed. He looks at a picture of Wanda and just can't wait to come home and just caress that soft body or whatever. So a man like Al can only be blindly loyal for so long. And then out of nowhere, we see someone has a target on his head and shoot shoots him in the head and that's the exact moment Al Simmons became Spawn. So I love the little bit of a deeper dive of the backstory of how Al Simmons became Spawn and what Botswana has to do with it. Priest, are you there? That's what Intercom says. Could this be Jessica Priest? She spawned back in Spawn's past and but Spawn doesn't recognize this because in his memory he has no idea who shot him and why. And she currently disposes of the body and we get this awesome image of just back and forth flashback or what this is all about it's being mixed together with other names Jessica, the Disruptor, God, and all their names are clawing inside of Spawn's head. What does the sigil need from him? It wants him and Terry in New York and Botswana, but at the same time, it's obsessed with Spawn to unlock the days when Spawn first became Spawn. But why? That's the question that Spawn asked himself. So back in Botswana, Terry tells Spawn, you still haven't told me exactly what we're doing here. Trying to find how the Psalms 137, a low level terrorist, got their hands on US military grade. But we all both know that our contact in this place place was when Terry is like I know but since he died I don't know who's in charge of operations here but whoever it is we're gonna need a lot of firepower and Spawn's like oh we got that covered baby so I love this back and forth flashback panel when Spawn's walking down the hill the same terrain as those many years ago it's deja vu memory again but this time he knows he's the target and he is the target now the only difference is he knows it and when he arrives at the hut he sees the riding in blood the king returned Terry do you read and a voice behind him tells him, he can't help you, Simmons. And the disruptor blasts him with the energy blast from behind. I knew you would return back to where it all began, Spawn, for you. Those I worked for didn't think you'd come back, but I knew you would because you couldn't resist because you're a good soldier. The sigil gave you an order and your training forces, you to do what you were told to do. And Disruptor tells Spawn you shouldn't involve people. Terry's there. That shocks the heck out of Spawn. See what happens when you just don't listen? Take the crown, Spawn. Open the door so the service can worship. None of us will get what we need until you take that freaking crown. And Spawn's like, who told you I couldn't come? Now that you're here, you're not that stupid. The sigil, it's the sigil control. This. And I know what you're thinking, Spawn. You're wondering who controls the sigil. If you want the answer to that, open the dead zones because you shut them all down before. Then you'll know when you see who comes crawling through there that you'll know who's controlling the sigil. If that's what you desire, open the freaking dead zones. And they fight. And this energy blast and distortion and Spawn using all of his might to try to take down this disruptor. And he's like, what? I give the orders here, Spawn. Not you. You hear that, soldier? Not you. And this is a gangster panel right here that is show Spawn. Little bits of flashback. And this brother is fighting Spawn as if he knows him. Get up, you coward. I taught you better than that. Spawn's like, what? Something doesn't seem right here. Kalisios is the only one that ever tried honing my powers when I became Spawn. He trained me. And when Spawn tries to get up, his limbs are limping. He's into, he's got to be in excruciating pain. You never taught me anything, bro. If you did, you would have been smart enough to know to stay the f*** away. Well, he probably didn't call him, bro. Anyone willing to kill children just to get my attention knows I won't rest until you're all dead. But now, I need to know who you are first before I kill you. And he used this chain to knock the helmet head off of him. And the reveal of who this freaking guy is is just... <laughs> I remember this guy from the Spawn 1997 movie, Jason Wynn, and he's the man who started it all. Then and now, may God help everyone. So this is a fantastic movie. I don't know what it is. This King Spawn series, in my opinion, just gets better and better. Once again, definitely worth adding to your comic book collection. I had a hell of a time reading this, and I'm looking forward to issue number seven. And I can't wait another month for issue number, sorry, issue number six, not seven. I gotta wait two months for issue number seven. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. We begin this issue exactly where we left off in issue number six. Spawn is fighting Jason Wynn, the disruptor, the one man who bested Al. Feel that burn and psychoplasm, Al. It's been a long time since you felt it, says Jason Wynn. 
When America was trading weapons for influence in this, in this region, I traded my soul as an insurance policy against you, ensuring I always be your commander. But when Jim Downey killed me, that's what the demons came. When they made me their slave, their dog. And that whole time I told myself, you'll pay for my pain, Spawn. And Spawn screaming in agony and pain as he's getting blasted by the psychoplasm. I run through things that men, normal men don't survive. But you and I are different, Al. We ain't normal, not because we're soldiers. No, it's because we do anything to survive. That's why we different. We literally go to hell and back and trade our souls. You know how long I was in that inferno? Forever! I was your slave! And what was done to me, even you be shocking. This picture by the Archbishop of Fernandez is an awesome picture of whatever this demon in hell. It's just, it's just awesome to look at, man. And then we get a visual of Jason Wynn and his cellmate with King Kate. And King Kate's banging on the cellmate. Give me a chance. I can do it. I'll kill Spawn for you and eat his face. Shut up, says Jason Wynn. And King Kate tells Jason Wynn, you'll see. I'll make Spawn fall to his knees. You just need to get me out. And the disruptor comes and opens the door. We see him in the shower, in the shower, and he's about to free them. The only way that happens is for you to bend your knee first but it came with a task attached. Deliver me King Spawn. Jason was like, that's the first time I ever heard them call you that. They never explained why they used that term, but they knew you were the only one who ever had enough power to lock the dead zones. So King Kate and I did what we do best. Focus on getting your attention, and King Kate killed children while I built a financial pipeline that gave me what I wanted. Then I rebuilt myself, and it shows him how he get puts the pieces together to become the disruptor under the Exodus Corp. If you hear, says Spawn, then the dead zones have already been breached. No, but there's a small crack at best, but only one can get through. So, and that takes too long, Spawn, so we need you to open it wide open. Why, says Spawn, so you can kill more children. I'm sorry if I'm yelling, but this is an awesome issue thus far. And also, King K's backstory being through hell and back, that is sick and tormenting right there, but it's such a good and compelling story why he has so much hate and anger in his revenge. You're not listening to me, Al. You never did. He's haymakers him with this helmet to the ground. They think you're a king? Take that victory, Spawn. Aren't you tired of being just a soldier in this war? And then meanwhile, a voice off panel says, you dropped something, Dick Jason Wynn. And it's Terry. When Spawn knocked over Jason Wynn's armor off, a, a piece of his armor got dislodged and Terry's wearing it. So now he gets to blast Jason Wynn with his own weapon, the Psychoplasm. But Jason Wynn is like, walks up to him unfazed, and this art's amazing right here. You pitiful worm, that's awesome, Dolly. You were just a pale comparison of Al, always hiding in the shadow. You want to be like him so much, you stole his wife and got her killed. And now look, you're not smart enough to know I'm not a hell spawn, so my Psychoplasm doesn't hurt me. Terry, don't, says Spawn. And as he approaches Terry, you know it's about to go down and just clobbers him in his jaw. And you could tell the punch like that from an enhanced strength. Uh, the minimum you were looking at is a dislocated jaw, which that's what it looks like. They describe this as a horrific car crash when metal slams into human flesh, and it's never good. Unlock the dead zone, said Disruptor, and all this suffering will end. Well, I might not want it to stop. I want the pain, says Spawn, so I can remember what you've done. And he unleashed this chains what each and every one of you has done to me and just goes to work on the disruptor and the disruptor has no choice but to hit a button on his wrist and Jason Wynn is it did the smartest move you can do with spawn unleashing that kind of haymaker on him suicide but guess what He's alive, but he's damaged to himself. Terry's body screaming in pain. The body caught in the battlefield between gods. And then Disruptor Jason Wynn is like, why? Why couldn't you just listen to me? Just accept your destiny and take your damn kingdom. But when Wen hears his victim, Spawn, Spawn puts his feet on his hand, stopping him in his track. And he meets a man who lost everything he ever cared for when he was alive. Pain, that's the only thing that gives him meaning. Pain, you know, that makes sense actually, right? The pain gives him meaning. The more of it he has, the more it drives him. And he cracks his helmet open. Screw your helmet. I want their names, says Spawn. I want the names that freed you from hell. And Jason was like, Wanda, what? His dead wife? What did you say? Humans are coming back, Al. Me, King K, why not her? Think about it. If you don't believe me, Al, follow the sigil if you don't believe me. Let it show you those kids. 
Psalms 137. And Spawn thinks about it. He's like, he gets pissed. You calling my wife's name? You speaking dirt in my wife's name? Who freed you? She freed you? Well, tell you what, you want to live by their biblical rules, says Spawn. Then you'll suffer by them too. An eye for an eye. And he takes out his eye. Damn, brother, I don't know what that looks like. That looks like Samson from the Bible too, but you know what? That is horrific stuff, but it's awesome. For hell hath no fury like a spawn scorn. Terry, it is dislocated jaws like, oh, Wanda, hold still, this is going to hurt. And you know he snaps his jaw into place. We get a glimpse of his eyes right there. That is awesome. Terry nearly passes out from the pain. And you see Wanda in the back of the flames. And it's like, dude, he can't be serious. If Terry, if Jason Wynn told me to follow the sigil, New York is where the sigil's at. Terry, we are going to New York. Spawn keeps replaying the same thought. If we came back, why not Wanda? And then we see Terry Wynn with his under his breath. Simmons is coming. But Wynn sends a message to who? And it's at that house in New York in King Spawn issue number three, where Spawn just pummeled King K to dust or blood or freaking crock pot meat soup or blood soup or whatever. The tactical team searches the premises. But what are they looking for? Is it the boy Simon that was taken by the Oracle? No. This is an Exodus Foundation. The money behind Psalms 137, their goals are more sinister. And this guy, I remember him from, uh, I think his name is Jericho. I remember him from Spawn's universe. You have it, King Kane's boat. It's enough. Gather the rest of his remains. Then get out of here. He gets on the phone. Is it done? Whoever's talking to him on the phone. Yes, we found the bones to place alongside the islands. Disruptor told us we'll have a guest soon. Good. And so we must prepare the throne. Behold! the throne and that's where we end this issue right here i got to say this is by far the best issue of king spawn in my personal opinion that i've read this is definitely worth the price to add to your comic book collection link in description if you wish to purchase this comic book from ratedcomics.com but i had a fantastic time reading this reading this issue it's awesome the truth behind jason Wynn and what he endured to become the disruptor and dude ah oh man i'm looking forward to issue number seven i don't know how many issues this is but but dude, I ain't got nothing else to say, but this is just a gangster issue. Probably one of the best issues I've read of King Spawn. Now, I hope you guys can forgive me for my voice sounding like this, but after I get this comic book review out, I got to rest up and rest my voice for the next comic book review. We begin this issue with after a brutal battle with Jason Wynn in Botswana, Spawn has returned back to the shadow alleys of New York City. Instead, he finds a putrid stench filled with city crawling with rats. Rats employed by Jason Wynn, who worked for the Exodus Foundation, the secret bank behind the terrorist group Psalms 137. Gunfire is going off, and that group is why Spawn has returned. Wynn told him that Wanda could come back and that the Exodus could, Exodus could make that happen. So when these bullets are going at Spawn, this greed, smoke, necroplasm, Spawn uses that to reverse the bullet right back around into the Exodus Foundation, into their head. But one thing that keeps bothering Spawn is Wynn talked about Wanda in a manner that seemed way too freaking comfortable. Spawn's like, the way he spoke her name, he sounded like she was already back. And he's looking at the number 11. Terry's like, this feels like a trap, like they're expecting us. Spawn's like, good. Then we'll walk right in the front door and I'll take what I want. And then Terry's like, what is it that you want, Spawn? I heard that Wynn said he was talking about wanting like Tom to you, making you think you could bring her back. I don't give a damn what any of you think right now. I'm wondering why they changed her numbers to 11. Terry's like, I don't get it. What does that got to do with Wanda? Maybe nothing, maybe everything. Use your training. They didn't change that number for no reason. So Terry's like, you're just going to go back at it? Okay, well, I need to know. Mr. true. Can you actually bring her back? Like Wynn said. And Spawn's like, you already said it. They're taunting us. And even if I could... I wouldn't. Now focus on why they chose Eleven. Who gives a shit, says Terry. Spot gives Terry his moment. In previous wars, part of Terry's job was to read codes and to crack ciphers. And he was always better at it when he was angry. And of course, if he focuses and he figured it out, one, three, seven, combined their 11. It's the sum. It's what the numbers of Psalm 137 add up to Spot. And on this panel, we get this awesome panel of the throne of spawn that they want him to take and these text messages talking about the 11th hour what does that even mean a bunch of a-holes are saying the psalms things the king is going to be exalted get off the thread let's do this it's the 11th hour 11 in biblical terms it's a number that denotes chaos 11 priests working in congress against spawn that some still in the shadows then we see these people these villains these monsters these agents are and you know they're they're like looking below they're like okay when spawn arrives the first wave begins 
begins, the protest will soon turn into riots. Chaos will ensue and Spawn will come. And then Mammon's like, you think your theatrics will draw Spawn to the throne? Theatrics? This brother, the black age girl, gets pissed about. You calling my shit theatrics? You tripping. What is it that you think this is, Mammon? Your time sitting in Mount Boja's throne has blinded you to a new reality. And this crazy fight in Dolls, Mammon turns into this, what's it, what the, is it this lizard or the swamp thing or whatever? And he's like, no, more. He's one man and none of you can destroy him. You failed me, Mammon. You failed me. Spawn's one man. Ezreal, that's enough off panel. And Ezreal's like, no, I decide what's enough. He pushes Mammon onto the God Throne. And it's like this John Carpenter thing. His skin starts boiling. Other heads and other spirits like emerge from his body. And you can tell this guy is in tremendous pain. But not until you feel the pain from the souls of the next world. And then boom, all this beautiful blood and guts explodes out of him. You are the court of priests. Act like it. Now the leader, Black Ezreal, wants the others to understand the seriousness of this message. Having them watch Mammon's punishment will drive that point. Now come to your leader. Now come all of you. Our leader commands we find Spawn and deliver him to his throne. One of you tend to Mammon's wounds. And it's kind of funny. Rain pours down in the city. Spawn and Terry, they find one of the Exodus soldiers and they disappear. And just like that in front of the Exodus Tower, it's like they're doing this march. The day Wanda Blake died. It's, it, it's a flashback. And Spawn's like, they're playing games. They're playing mind games. They're liars. What are they doing? It's deja vu. And it's not pretty. But it's actually more than that. Terry's like, wait, is that Wanda's car? Let's go. Go. It might be her. We, I don't want you reliving this, Spawn. Spawn's like, we can't. It's not real. Then someone in the crowd shoots and starting a riot that catches Wanda's car inadvertently in the action. Every witness said her death was a tragic accident caused by an overzealous mom. And these mobsters, these protesters are just going to work on her car, scaring her, and they're terrifying her. Just like in King Spawn issue number one, this was executed to merely garner Spawn's attention. Because from that moment, Al died from the very second he traded his soul and he became Spawn. He knew that his wife, the love of his life, was destined to die like this. All because Al had been been cursed with the powers of the hell spot and as spotty misses power this brother gets disintegrated the bottle the flaming bottle of liquor lands in the car and spawn is reminded in that very moment that for all his victories all his powers he's incapable of changing the past impotent to prevent a replay of his greatest loss which is wanda as she burns alive in the car during the riot black Israel comes in you must be asking who would dare do this to her it was us we plotted your wife's death all for the purpose of bringing you to this moment moment to your throne and soon you will rule not only this world but the world but you will lord over other worlds you've yet to imagine spawn now we go into this uh snow world that has been covered with green a place of which we can only dream of the oracle is talking to simon do you understand what you're seeing simon as they see the reflection of what's going on in this pond simon's like they're trying to hurt mr spawn no they're trying to break him so they can use him but that has angered someone none of us want to see get mad is that the person you talk about, Gaia? Yes, and she can make everything die if she wants. That's why Winners has come to this place. And Simon's like, well, why would she do that? Because she's dying too. Like Mr. Spawn's wife, just like that. And then Simon says something that triggers the Oracle where I'm glad I'm safe here. You're not safe. She wraps her fist around his neck. You weren't brought here to be safe. You're already dead, boy. Stop what you're doing. And meanwhile, while she's strangling the Simon around his neck, Caught in some odd trance, the Oracle briefly pauses as she hears a whisper. Oracle, the whisper of her master calling. She drops Simon. Simon goes into the woods and the Oracle looks for Gaia. Flames come out alive like like Exodus when God spoke with Moses, you know, when, he, when the flames come around the bush. The ground trembles as flame bursts apart in the pond before her and Oracle listens to Gaia's commands. They have started their war one. I told them never to begin, but they defy me once more, building their throne, thinking their new king will become my equal as they conspire by joining together. My priority right now must be the safety of that boy. Survival rests with him and his well-being. So for your sake and everyone else's, treat that child like you had birthed him yourself. Am I understood, Oracle? Yes, my lord. Raise the child well, for he is a special one. Simon goes into the cold. He sees his big foot imprint and the sharp, dark, shadowy figure overlooking him. And Simon asks him, are you a friend? And it was in that moment that hulking giant leaves forward, a monstrous heap composed of nature's discards. But more importantly, if Al had known what the boy was to become, he might have killed the child himself. I am your teacher, and you are Simon. 
the Kingslayer. And that's where we end spawn issue number seven. Once again, I wish I could put more enthusiasm with, with, with my voice doing this review. And I appreciate those comments where you guys say my yelling and my enthusiasm helps, you know, bring the reviews back to life. But I had to bring out this content because this is a gangster issue. And this feels like old school spawn, reliving the past, bringing it back forward, pushing it forward, and I'm excited to see where issue number eight and future stories of this issue goes. This is definitely worth adding to your comic book collection. Link in description if you wish to do so. Now, before we begin with this review, I do want to say about the Carnage number one comic book giveaway. I am going to do the review and announce the giveaway by no later than Saturday this weekend. Just waiting on the shipment to come in, but let's get into the review. We begin this issue in the heart of New York City where Wanda Blake's car just appeared to be burning in front of Spawn's face. What kind of magic is this? Jason Wynn with his eyes gouged out looking like Samson from the Bible. And given that this issue is going to reference the Bible a couple times, I just thought it will be fitting to do so. I told you about Swana. Bring your Wanda back as possible, Spawn. But you need to understand, Al, there are some things even you can't do despite your powers. But if you were all powerful and you took the throne, you could do anything. But we weren't ready. But now we are. The question is, are you with Spawn's fuming with necroplasm because he's pissed? And what he sees is all these beasts being unleashed like a living nightmare in the streets of New York. The courts of priests know they can make Spawn vulnerable, but not by attacking him directly, but instead eviscerating everything he's sworn to protect. These people. Terry, get these people to safety, says Al. It may be too late as these people, these court of priests, these monsters are going savage on these people. Beast mode and blood begins to flow and overwhelm the streets and black Azrael is like we gave you a chance hell spawn you should have taken it spawn takes them all one by one Zara one of the gods greatest angels who once led the seraphim and Turbo was a man who was previously and hideously mutated rips his horns out and slices Zara up in the throat Mammon a former lord from hell along with a half a dozen others enough says black Azrael I'll not give you the satisfaction to glow at our misery spawns Psalm 137 says Happy is the one who seizes your enemies and infants and bashes them against the rocks. The infants aren't simply children, Spawn. They're whatever our enemy may cherish. When I was a young angel, you bashed parts of heaven before my eyes. I watched you tear through a family of my angels. They were weak, powerless, and you defeated them and shamed them. I thought my cherished heaven was infallible, but you showed me otherwise. Well, hey, you know, it's a sponge, your boy, right? And now he's looking like a Dave Bautista over here. Not looking like Drax, but doesn't it look like Dave Bautista? What do you guys think about that? Just let me know. I left Paradise Spawn, then ripped the wings from my own back. And I remember in Gunslinger Spawn when Gunslinger ripped the wings from the angel's back. It is just like the ultimate form of like defeat, low humiliation. But I learned it wasn't power that you had. It was a lie. You have rage. You have vengeance. And that's not true power you still don't have that not yet but you could spawn then you can lead us all against those who lied to me in heaven and those who helped kill the woman that you always loved wanda sit on the throne and you become a force none could ever fathom grab your destiny spawn that sounds like kind of preacher status right there but hey i'm just going with it and by the way before i go any further i appreciate the comments and you guys say you appreciate the energy and you like the energy that i put in the videos even though i thought it might be too much well i do these videos in the early morning with caffeine the help of coffee so <laughs> anyways the greatest forward compliment you guys could give me is just by watching the video liking the video and commenting but i will never oppose if any of you guys buys me a cup of coffee before the next comic book review link in description but I will continue on with the review spawn snaps possessed with the madness that can no longer be contained he rages he gets angry and madness from within from years and years of what others think he needs but he's sick of it and he's sick of them it's not time to play by their rules he's playing by his own rules and his agenda which is a total destruction of all his enemies especially those that stand in the way and he tries to go after black Azer, but he gets all power flex you disappoint me spawn we came to you out of respect despite so many transgressions on my people because your energy force gives you divinity to sit upon the god throne and the others can't but a clock has begun and they go ham it looks like black Azrael is ripening in the full response triggering the decree in which the quarter priest will turn the wrath upon earth and turning it to nothing spawn if you don't take the damn throne so take the offer go raise your queen and we see an image of Wanda with wings calling out his name Ow. 
Wanda? Spawn, you have to know this has to be a trick of some sort. She suffered enough, Spawn. Why? You guys did this, right? You Now you're putting this in Spawn's face? And Spawn's like, uh, okay. So Spawn's like, okay, there's a hundred things he can yell back at them. He withholds all of them. He won't dignify Black Ezreal with the response. And counter to every instinct in him, he searches for control. You can't fight it, Al, says Jason, when your rage is your true nature. That's the king we came looking for. That's what happens when you accept that rage. And Spawn's like, well, I'm going to unleash that rage. The Bible has a quote in Kings chapter 16, verse 11. When he began to reign, as soon as he sat on his throne, that he slew all, including emissaries like the court of priests or corrupt prophets like Black Israel. And I love this art going back and forth with Black Israel. And it looks like Black Israel is getting the upper hand, but Spawn's rage is just something they can't overpower. And Spawn's like, all right, you want me to be your leader? You're supposed to king? Fine. Let's do it. But I want you to know right now, if I get that power, my first act will be to rip your powers from you, then kill you where you stand. Be careful what you wish for. Now, who's got the stomach to finish this game? And the group, they stand looking at Spawn. I'm like, I don't know, bro. We don't want none of this smoke. You know, we just want to show you our worthiness and give you worship that you deserve so you can unlock the dead zones. And Spawn's like, ha <laughs> So they have to retreat. You're not taking this seriously, Al. You're so close to holding your queen once more. Why won't you take that gift? And he's like, because y'all been seduced by hell for far so long. And I'm not into that kind of pelvic sorcery. You actually believe your own lies? I don't. I'm just joking about the pelvic sorcery. That Dave Batista look got me thinking Guardians of the Galaxy. So Black Israel's like, if you doubt us, ask the Oracle. Demand Gaia tell you what the secret she's planning for you on Earth. I promise you, you won't like what she says. Is this referencing in the last issue where Gaia or that or that or that monster's gonna train Simon how to be the King Slayer for Spawn? I wonder if that's what it is. And Terry's like, so that's it? You're just gonna let them go and not pay for their actions? Spawn's like, man, they said what they needed to say. Well, you've gone soft, Spawn. I don't think so. Perhaps I've gotten wiser and the plant emerges from the ground. That's probably the goddess herself sending me an invitation or a death threat. Now, two years ago when the green was alive and healthy, when it's watchful sentry, the Oracle and her faithful steed found a fallen angel, Black Azor. So we get a little bit of history of Black Azor here. He was on the brink of madness as he entered the foot of their sacred garden. With him, a lifeless body of a woman, which I presume to be Wanda. You have no place here. Guy takes none from heaven or hell. Turn and leave, you've been warned, boy. Your goddess will want to hear what I've got to say. Go ahead and spew your lies. She doesn't want to hear it. But like them, you will still not enter the lands. My pet, you are free to feed. This hideous looking mofo goes to eat. Azor and Wanda and he's like okay it's shame you were such a beautiful creature but now you're hideous it's over in a flash he flies through the creature's skull but the sacred law has been broken okay for the first time a law that states shedding blood in the green is not permitted weren't you about to eat this brother just a moment ago but because he killed you first now the sacred law has broken hmm that sounds like a double standard to me so black Azor's like this woe is with me the green is the only place for her body to rest it needs to be here where neither heaven or hell can Corrupt it, and this girl's like, We don't want your poison. Hold your tongue, woman. And he backhands her, and he's like, What have you done? The green is sacred and pure. I, and he's like, Man, look, I came for your help, and to tell God if she doesn't wake up soon, her cherished earth and the green will be scorched. And that's where we end off with that. Then we go into the next panel where Simon is training with the, with this monster. I don't know what the heck this monster is, but he's training him to become the king slayer. And while he's doing it, he's also telling the story of Gaia and the green as well. Simon's like, So what happened to the angel? Was Gaia and Mad? Yes, she raised me back from the dirt. She told us about you. Well, I want to play some more. What else did she say? I want to beat you. And the monster's like, okay, you will. And you've gotten better, Simon. This is one piece, one step towards being King Slayer and fulfilling your destiny. And Simon's as a kid, he's like, I don't know what that means. What is my destiny? You will get there. Don't be surprised what you and your sword will be able to unleash. And as the sword's in the ground, it begins to crack. On Earth, cracks are signs that something has broken and left unchecked. Cracks will only become worse. And often, we learn the hard way we shouldn't have ignored the crack for so long. But here, in the green, this crack is just the beginning. Underneath, the body Azra had brought to the green opens its eyes. And it's the long slumber of the queen is complete which is Wanda and that's how we end this issue I got to say King Spawn issue number eight is just gangster it picks up exactly where it left off very rich I definitely could get jiggy with this book and I'm loving this book and also it's a great history lesson for Spawn as well but link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection 
We begin this issue with Spawn walking in the blistering cold. Black Israel sends Spawn towards the pit of the chaos to the place called the Green, along with the cryptic message. Ask Gaia about Wanda. You might not like what you hear, Spawn. What did he mean by that? Is this all connected to the court of priests? A group that Spawn wasn't able to stop? Spawn knows he can't go at them directly, so he'll have to devise a new plan. But first, he needs to know if they're somehow using Wanda. That's all that matters to him. Terry did tell Spawn previously, you're letting them use you, Al. You're letting them make this personal. He's correct, because vengeance is always personal. A tiny plant growing between the cracks in broken concrete had invited Spawn here. He feels the cold, which means his powers are being drained, but he'll worry about that later because he doesn't know how much of that power he'll need. You are intruding, says he, the giant monster. Shout out to Lower Toaster for commenting on that from the previous video because I did not know what the name of that monster was. Spawn's like, bruh, I didn't ask to come here. Someone wanted me here and I want to know why. The Oracle's like, I know you ain't that delusional, Simmons. You must have an idea of your part in all this. You're useless if you don't. This is a way gods negotiate by neutralizing their enemy strength. The Oracle launches an energy attack on Spawn. Then the monster attacks with all his might. Your past isn't here, Spawn, and your influence means nothing. The Green had been an unlikely ally to Spawn, but the sigil, Black Azrael, that day, Batista looking mofo, and Simon, the child. Spawn senses that they're all part of this puzzle, and the brother's not entirely wrong about that. Spawn has had enough of the Oracle's bull jive and flies to the heap like, yeah, son, tell your mama to save me a plate. But I might have lost my appetite the same time because that's just nasty. Where is Gaia? Spawn demands an answer and boom, he's blasted with the energy blast from behind. Damn, lady, disrespect. At least hit a brother from the front. Spawn is told that he's trespassing here and that he's lost all right to demand anything. The deeper into the garden he enters, the more he becomes truly what he is. And what is that? He's someone desperate to be a man again as he forms back into his human self. He will never be that again, but that hasn't stopped him wanting it every day since being cursed as a hell spawn. He grabs the oracle by the throat, lifts her up, and demands the whereabouts of guy. He's acting like he's got nothing to lose and everything to gain. We all know that this is a dangerous recipe right here. He clutched her throat to assert his dominance, not so much to harm her. The oracle did warn spawn after he defeated King Kate in issue three. If he didn't end this war, her master will. I am here and I've been watching you, says Gaia. Nature's queen, the air splits turning wind into a tornado. She is here and she is everywhere. Spawn tells Gaia that he was told to ask about a soul named Wanda Blake. Gaia is fully aware of that. Spawn's like, you know what? What are you hiding? Everything, says Gaia. All the pieces of earth you humans haven't already contaminated. We are hiding the souls of children you Spawn couldn't save. A better world is what Gaia is also hiding. A better world that will shine when wars with heaven and hell have played themselves out. Your ego won't let you stop, Spawn. You could have been king, but your nature is far too cruel to hold that role. I just got to add that the art is sick and this lady, look, even though she's weird looking, you got to show a little appreciation of that. And she goes into a backstory how Spawn has forgotten his history. You came years ago to the green, took your powers in to teach you some humility, Spawn, which is a reference to Spawn 75. The dark god Horizon. remember, he looked like he would defeat you, but my army saved both our worlds. Cogs, medieval Spawn, Black Azrael, I indulged them all. Knowing that however distasteful it may be, they too are part of the future spawn. One where you finally learn how to become, how to act like a rightful king where all wars end, allowing earth to grow once more. Israel wants you to embrace that future as do I. Nature is the last faction afraid, needing to rid of you spawn. Your cruel soul has to go first. After Gaia gives Spawn a history lesson, the Oracle says this command. Before taking any crown, strike my child! The Kingslayer lets out a blast from the sword which weakens Spawn some more. When he defends himself, Kingslayer's helmet dislodges, revealing that it's Simon, the same boy who died in the explosion from issue number one, and the same boy who was with King Kate in issue number three. But somehow he aged, and he is no longer a child. You should have let me go or be taken by King Kate. I'll make you regret that. Here, he is another victim of an army that turns children into soldiers. Psalms 137, the Exodus Foundation. Gaia and her green, they're all guilty of this. 
convincing children's souls that they have a purpose, that they're special. Special! They're all knights in the fairy tale. Al knows that the children are victims, just like he was. The oracle reminds Spawn, you are a man in the, in the garden, not a god. Choose your actions wisely, but should you win, you will need to destroy the heap next. What the hole is midsection? Bruh! This place has turned you all insane, said Spawn. With his anger, one question is implanted in Al's brain. Why? Why did Gaia bring Al here to fight a boy? Then it makes sense to Al. She needs a sacrifice of some kind. He says to Simon that they're using him. Simon calls him a liar. Al kicks him back, literally, so maybe he'll listen. I'll beat you senseless if that's what it takes, boy. They're using you, so I'd rather beat them, not you. For Simon being the king slayer, he's not ready to slay anything at this point. Al calls out Gaia. Is that your plan, Gaia? Your plan is for me to fight a child? If my powers worked your eye before Spawn can finish his sentence. Gaia is like, show me, show me what you could do. The symbiote is coursing through his veins and Spawn is exactly what the guy wants him to do. Show her, that's what he's gonna do. He blasts the Oracle and heat back. He tells Simon to get up and run. Guy is like, no, no you won't. I control the souls here. They listen to my whispers, not you. And with a mere wave, she demonstrates that fact. It takes four seconds for her to absorb all of Spawn's opponents. The wind blows and the silent blankets the area. Then she speaks once more in pure silence. I need to show you something. Ezreal came here years ago to deliver us a body. One he claimed was too important to be left alone in heaven. A gust blows across a patch of snow revealing the hidden treasure. Wanda, the look on Spawn's face like, dude, after all this time, after all these years, now I get to see my beloved? And Guy is like, oh no, she's not yours. She and her rights belong to Azrael since he brought her on my land. But there is a way for you to change that Spawn. As king, you can raise heaven's souls from the dead. Azrael promised me that if that happened, you and all your kind would leave the earth forever, letting your entire planet return back to the green state. Lose your anger, become king, and reunite with your wife, or I make her dust. Now this is something that Spawn has to ponder. Every time he gets tempted to take the crown, every test it gets more tempting. Spawn has always wondered a million times since her death that if he had all the power, one day could he really bring her back? But how? How would that ever be possible if one of the tasks can never be completed? Because how can Al Simmons, this vengeful Hellspawn, ever lose his anger? And that's where we end this issue. I don't know what Spawn's gonna do. I ain't gonna leave it at that. I thought it was good. I thought this was really good. I'm just curious about the next issue. Obviously I am, because that's the way King Spawn always ends. Now before we go any further, we're just going to do a quick touch up on the previous issue where Spawn traveled to the green world by the imitation of Gaia. Once there he was attacked by the Heap and Simon the Kingslayer. After surviving, Gaia gives Spawn a grave warning about bringing Wanda back to life if he takes the throne. And when we begin this issue, it starts off with black, white with the flood of red. I believe it's inferring the real transformation of rage that's taking place with Spawn as he begins to inherit the throne as King Spawn, which may lead to what the character's becoming or about to become. So while Spawn faces down Gaia over the potential fate of his wife, his friend Terry roams the streets of New York. Like Al, Terry loved Wanda too. And like Al, he's learned too much to let certain things go. First and foremost, that his wife Wanda could possibly return from the dead. If Spawn takes Asriel's offer, the Exodus Foundation can make that happen. It's why he needs to get inside their building. He needs to see for himself all their inner workings. And that is where this guy comes from. And that guy, his name is Leonard Cole. He works at the janitorial night shift at the Exodus. He introduces himself or he tells Terry hello and Terry within seconds puts him out. You know, just takes him down real quick with the swiftness. The only person to witness that or the only thing to witness the beating is the mud puddles. Or so Terry thinks. He gets his jumpsuit, some keys and a couple covert tools that'll be good enough. Even in the shadowy presence behind him. Because that shadowy presence is spawn shadow always haunting Terry. And he talks to the shadow. I've got lock, picks and a gun. I don't need you. But it turns out the trick is on himself because Terry realizes the ghost isn't really there. It's a trick 
one that his own mind keeps playing on him. Eventually he gathers himself together because it's time to execute the plan. The cleanup staff changes shift at midnight so the entire building will be like a skeleton crew and like most people no one notices the janitor. As long as he keeps his head down he's on time, keeps his mind, keeps his nose low to the ground and just does his business. Terry goes to the elevator. He looks at the building's blueprints online. There's a locked floor on the elevator panel number sequence. He's about to fix that. The door opens. He gets to his floor and Terry hears voices. I told you he'll fail. I told you the plan's working. Spawn's chasing Azrael's tail, so the plan's working. And what he hears is these two demonic brothers, Zab and Ab. And they're having a conversation about the combining their teleportation powers, how that brought back King Cade and Jason went from the dead zone. And that's referencing King Spawn issue three and issue number five. Terry realizes though, these two demonic brothers, Zab and Ab, don't look like much. Their ability to teleport has helped return old enemies to earth. And they're talking some more. Imagine what we can do if we were healthy. Who else could be free? Hey, hey bro, are you listening? It's all the shadow man. We're just part of it, so get over yourself. What really matters in the grand scheme of things is Spawn wants his wife back, and we all want this world. So at some point, we're gonna make Spawn choose one or the other, the world or Wanda. Terry sees it in his own mind's eye. He sees Morona seducing the tech billionaires making use of their social channels, causing neighbors to turn on neighbors and families on each other. And at the end of all this would be Azrael walking towards us with this beast behind him ready to cause destruction and mayhem. Terry arms himself with the night vision goggles. He turns the lights out. The brothers are like, what the hell? Terry knows he's out of this league and the only thing that'll keep him alive right now is his anger. He has to channel the inner rage of Spawn and he attacks the brothers, goes to work on him. As his blood boils, Terry channels the same rage and anger he's seen from Spawn. Tell me where Wanda is. She's not in the dead zones, and the only one strong enough to bring her back is a king, says one of the brothers. What does that mean, says Terry. In his anger, Terry had momentarily forgotten about the other brother. He goes in from behind with this knife and impales him in his eye. And Terry's skills aren't close enough to be able to defeat the two demons at once. And the brothers are like, that's what happens to anyone trying to delay the king's journey towards his throne. Let's go, little brother. Terry just lays there. You're not going anywhere, says Terry, and he gets back up. Turns out in the military, they teach you how to play possum. That knife that went through his night goggles did not exactly go through his eyes, just a couple inches away from it. Never turn your back on special forces, says Terry. Though Terry knows that the blade had penetrated another inch or two, he will be dead. He scours the rest of the floor and he feels a chill. A good soldier trusts his instinct. Terry had the same feeling dozens of times before. It always means something's wrong and he waves through the horrific mix running down the hall as he prepares for anything. I, the more I go for, for on in this book, I'm kind of digging the red, black, and white uh, coloring in this. But he wasn't ready for this. Welcome Terry, I've been waiting for you as Spawn sits on the throne. Owl sounds different to Terry. It's not the echo of his voice, but the phrasing of the language. It sounds regal. Tell me why you're here. What are you scared of that this throne will take my soul? I'm afraid you're gonna try bringing her back, says Terry. Why? Because secretly you want her for yourself? It, that Wanda is yours, she's not yours. And Terry's like, bro, she's not coming back, Al. You need to accept that. He doesn't even acknowledge him as king. He just acknowledges him as Al. Too bad, says Spawn. You don't have a say in that. I do. They weren't lying, Terry. She can come back if I want her to. If you really love her, you don't want to do that, Spawn. Or actually, he calls him out because he's not going to acknowledge him as King Spawn. Don't tell me what I can do. Not even after you betrayed me. Not after you stole her from me. The god throne bubbles made from the monsters Al has slain. Their putrid bodies are coursing through his vein as he sits on his throne. I know what I'm dealing with and I need you to see it too. Terry is like, I'll take you down now if I have to. So you got to get a grip. That's right, my boy. Get mad. Rage. I'll need that spirit because if I fail, you will need to find a way to kill me. But we aren't there yet so don't worry soon very soon you will know what you need to do because either every one of my enemies will pay for their connection to Wanda's death or I will need them to claim the throne for myself if it comes to that Terry destroy me any way you have to what about Wanda says Terry as he sinks into the shadow Al whispers 
leave her to me. Then once Spawn and Terry are gone, the true architects of the night appear, the court of priests. It has begun, says Ezra, as it would. Simmons has felt the power of the throne. It runs through him, and now that urge will be near, it will only grow. When it consumes him, the dead zones will open. And one of the brothers is like, when he does that, we annihilate him and everyone he cares for. Azra has no patience for this. That type of thinking is what got the dead zone seals in the first place. You let Spawn rule uncontrolled, then you guys are fools. And the monster's like, Zab is right. We've given Spawn too much knowledge. And the girl's like, you'll follow the laws. The same laws all of us on the court of priests agree to. Enough, says Azra. When you know Simmons better than anyone, what do you think? And the brother is like, not Terry, but the other Abrazad, I can't tell the distinction with this black, white, and red. He says when he believes his cause is right, he won't let anything or anyone stand his way. You offered him his queen. We need him to be our king now. Because whether Simmons likes it or not, he's tied to the throne. The God throne has felt its king. Now it awaits him, his inevitable return. Look, see for yourself. The throne mantle is telling us who'll sit and be our Lord. Simmons will return back to hell, then finally he will fulfill his true destiny. And that's where we end this review, this issue of King Spawn, issue number 10. This issue has both grit and foreshadowing that this may not be the last time we see the black, white, and red form being used. I totally get that it's it's used as a way to, of the transformation of Spawn's rage or the rage that's taking place with Spawn based on what happened in issue number nine. So if this is how King Spawn is going to present itself, I might be open to another red, black, and red uh, color because it feels like a Frank Miller Sin City kind of vibe, but I kind of dig it. I really do. Yo, this is the most violent issue of Spawn I've read so far. Before we go into the issue, I'm just going to give a little flashback. An assault by Terry on the headquarters of the Court of Priests seems to go as planned. Until Spawn shows up and delivers an ultimatum to Terry that could change their relationship forever. So now Spawn has been sitting on the throne, on the God throne for two weeks. By sitting on that damn throne, it was only going to be a matter of time before he hunts again. The moment they mentioned Wanda, he knew he would do this. And they knew that he had to. Now one by one spawn plans on making him scream and tremor will be the first to fall and the more brutal they fall the louder they get his message spawns like shoots his gun in the air like dude i forgot how good it feels to hold a gun again it's been a while and he tells tremor you're going to be the next example of what they can look forward to you think you could dig up my kids dig up my wife and kill kids apologies if they didn't dig up kids maybe they did why because you want off this damn earth is that it well that's not happening none of you are getting out of here and Tremor's like need to tell the court of priests Spawn's like well, freaking tell them then boom clobbers him it's not gonna save them for me boom and you're not gonna get saved for me boom clobbers him again and Spawn is just going on a violent rampage and Spawn goes into this monologue they want the dead zones open that they made it clear from the very start but what did they do to get my attention to do that they took the ugliest parts of my past and twisted them it's unforgivable with heaven hell and Gaia working together, they think the only choices they've given me are now to save my, save the world or save my wife. Why can't I do freaking both? Why? So that's the game they want to play? Then I'll play that shit. And Spawn's like, am I your king now? And Tremor's like, yes. Bow to me and answer, am I your king? Damn, Spawn, you getting all, did you eat today, brother? I mean, I know gas prices are high, but at least you got necroplasm teleportation. And the Spawn goes into it. You want to know how I found you tonight? How I knew you were here? Because I am military trained. That's why I hunt down my targets. And now the court of priests on the top of my shit list. And Spawn's like, and I remembered. People who thought they were powerful, they get sloppy. They get stupid like you. All that power you wield, and yet you still go back to the same shit house that you did when you were just some punk. Why? So you can show off that power and exact revenge on those who belittled you in the past? Disrespected you? Like that mobster son you took out to the back alley and you clobbered him? How did that make you feel? Did it make you feel more of a man when you did that? So, how did I find you, says Spawn? I followed your evil. And Spawn's like, and then all your dead friends, the one that I slid while taking the throne, they all came out screaming at me begging me to come pay you a visit. And all those people that he slayed come out of Spawn's internal organs and just go to work on Tremor. Spawn's like, they want to show me their loyalty to me. They want to show their loyalty to me, Tremor. And they just end Tremor right then and there. So Terry was scared 
at what they might do to Spawn. He knew it was a trick meant to enslave Al, but not Al. Al Sim is like, no, nah, if I take that God Throne, it's a chance to increase my powers and to exact revenge. That's because Al, when he pushed, is controlled by his emotions with the anger that's always present. The only thing is, to what degree? Terry knows is about a friend for the first few months they joined the military academy. Since he's become a hell spawn, it's only gotten worse. Tonight, his enemies will meet that rage. Among them, Mammon, and Spawn goes to work on Mammon, just ends him. And Zara, Spawn goes to work on Zara and ends her too. Terry, though, has chosen a much longer view of the situation. He saw what the throne did to Spawn. Terry is curious what else it might be capable of as he looks upon the God Throne, thinking maybe I can use it to bring Wanda back to life. So the military or whoever these guys are like, what the hell is that? <laughs> he blasts him off. The throne, Terry knows it needs to be destroyed, but before it can trick him into thinking it can bring Wanda back, like it did to Al, it's not a trick. The throne speaks to Terry, telling Terry to submit his mind to every possibility. With every word spoken, the volume in his brain becomes a louder and deafening sound, teaching, preaching, and the throne tells Terry, I will show you how Wanda returns, and you shall see how Spawn ends your world. Is he dead, says another figure that Terry comes back from the explosion with all all that information coming in. No, the men I trained are amazingly resilient. And you know, based on Spawn King, uh, based on King issue Spawn number five, that that person is a disruptor. Jason Wynn, who trained Spawn and Terry. Blocks away, Zab runs for his life like a wild animal fleeing from its enemy, hoping he won't get eaten. As he runs, he runs, as he runs away from whatever he's running from, we can only imagine his Spawn. He snaps his finger thinking that the teleportation will open up a portal, but his teleportation is failing him. He feels it, he's weak. And then all of a sudden he feels Spawn coming back from behind him and Spawn shatters that finger, making teleportation impossible now. And Spawn's like, dude, I need to get more. I need to get more asses on the plate. But Azrael comes in, Claw Spawn from, from behind, Finally, we've been awaiting your return. Waiting for you to lead our resurrection or pass that mission to someone more worthier than you. And Spawn's like, really, bruh? All you know is hate. It's blinded you to everything else. And if you're not willing to see what you are, then boom, and Ray Lewis is his ass through the wall. Woo! Let's make it official. He can't see it, says Spawn. And he gouges his eyes out. And just, dude, just squeeze that eyeball just for good measure. Just squeeze it. And the creature, I, I don't recall who this creature is, but the creature tells Spawn, it's Wanda. You're not the only one who loved her enough to want her back. What does that mean? That means Terry. Terry rises and tries to clear the fog, still blanketing his brain as he nears the throne again. He's careful not to touch it, though. There was something he saw that just does not sit well with him. But something needs to be done. So he gets to work doing what he came here for in the first place. And this creature's like, we're just, let's, we're just supposed to let it happen and the disruptor Jason went underneath is like yes Marana you'll see and mind his work Terry takes a step back plants a C4 on all that chair he's like you shouldn't have F with my wife boom explosion happens blows up the quarter priest building and the god throne we warned you Simmons told you to just do your duty or you lose everything and everyone you ever cared for and that promise is just getting started and that's where we end this issue of king spawn issue number 11 dude this has got to be the most violent and brutal spawn i've read in my personal opinion but you guys let me know in your comment section below not to mention this book is gangster spawn had all this rage and all this power so now that the god though when it's destroyed or blown up or presumably blown up we don't know until the next issue does that mean spawn power goes away with it too love the issue i thought it was absolute gangster and i can't wait to read more of king spawn but this is by far one of my favorite issues just a quick summary terry's attempt to destroy the god throne succeeds but at what cost spawn is determined to teach the court of priests a lesson they will never forget as terry wakes up from the explosion that he blew up the god throne terry wakes up from the explosion of the god throne he put enough c4 enough to take out an entire floor terry had seen what the hellish throne did to out and he knew that even if it killed him he had to try to destroy it he still lives but what about his targets? And he sees the god though and it forms into like this crown from Spawn's dead enemies. Science tells you that you can't destroy energy. It can only be converted into something else. So despite Terry's best efforts, the energy of all of Spawn's monsters that he's slain lives on, waiting for its king as it forms into a crown. Meanwhile, in this other panel right here, everyone's been coming for Spawn for a long time. He's going on a hellish and brutal battle with Azrael. Get on your damn feet, fight me. 
Ajor thought somehow this outcome would be different because he murdered children. He freed King Cade. Jason Wynn brought back to life to haunt Al's life, along with using his wife, Wanda, to torture Al. The combo is what's fueling Spawn's rage. I'm going to destroy that throne. God said, won't allow that to happen. And he goes up from behind Spawn and sacks him like an NFL quarterback, not even seeing nothing coming from his blind side. Boom! We waited a long time for this. This is our time. You'll lead this war into the dead zones one way or another and become what we're meant to be. Meant to be, says Spawn. Now he goes into this monologue. His enemies have all gone insane since he locked them all out of the dead zones, not being able to return to their natural habitats in heaven or hell, which has driven many of his enemies to pure act of desperation, deluding themselves into thinking they can control Simmons' rage. Rage for a life stolen. Rage for those that betrayed him. And rage for unearthly beasts and their cowardice for preying on innocence. Turn your God, I'm coming for him. And his damn kingdom, says Spawn, and he rips out God sent Spawn wings. And that, when we remember in Gunslinger Spawn, issue number one or issue number two, that is the most humiliating and lowest you can make an angel feel by ripping to the wings from their back. As he savagely rips one of the angel's wings from its spine, he remembers he's battling more than those outcasts. Zab is now at Azrael's side, another recruit who believes in the madness. As Azrael explains and goes into this dialogue, like, hey, Spawn, you're going to open up these Danzos, yo, or else we're duking it out and you ain't going to like it. Azrael's words come from the book of Revelation, a bastardization of that passage, but Azrael still believes in every syllable he speaks for these are the end times for, him, for a world about to go extinct destroy the throne if you want spawn but not until you're upon it the world isn't worthy of you you're worthy of that spawn take the damn throne spawn your true servants await you on the other side it's time to join heaven earth and hell together with us at your side to help guide you and spawns like to what end you can so you can rule all of it no you will rule with us. Take him to the dead zone and show him what's at stake, says Black Azrael. But Zab is like, dude, my hand is kind of weak. Azrael, just do it. But the thing is, with this injury to his hand, and he's not strong enough to send Spawn to the dead zones because in the previous issue, Spawn broke his hand. He can't do it. All he can do is open a portal on Earth, which transports Spawn from one point to another in the same vicinity to dodge their attack. Zab, what the hell is your magic doing? I'll handle this then. Zab, Gabriel just goes in and attacks Spawn. They go duke it out. And I love these panels of the art. It's clean. It's crisp. The art's like manga, but savage at the same time. Just loving this, man. So Black Azure tells Spawn, why won't you just save your wife? Tell me! Her body awaits you in the green, but her soul is locked behind the dead zones. Unlock it and bring your lover back to life. And this snake comes out of his freaking eye. And you know I hate for freaking snakes, man! But you know what? For King Spawn, I might just let it slide because this is really sick and hellish and you got to have some of that action, you know? So the snake comes in, pommels Spawn to the ground. Spawn's like, no! Al wants to believe all this, but he knows it's a damn lie. And Ace was like, Gaia will deliver one until you can save her spawn and her suffering as he impales her. The snake from his eye just wraps around him. He lifts him up with his fear and just tortures him and throws him to the other end. Protect her and the innocent humans you profess to care so much spawn and her suffering. Take the thumb. The book of Psalms asks us to murder our enemy's children. It begins how all this begins. But do you know how it ends spawn? It ends with Simmons coming of our king and sponsor man i'm tired of hearing that fucking word king you know i'm tired of hearing that they don't want someone to lead them they need someone to use them someone to manipulate until they can strip their leader of every ounce of that power he has so they can wield that power for themselves and spawn understands that the only result from those incapable of holding such power is complete destruction a total scorched earth for everything that is alive and spawns like okay he rips off the the you know being impelled from black azure with that sphere he's like okay let's pretend you're right let's just say the world needs me to save it it needs me a king your mistaken thinking is, why would I need any of you? And he goes back and attacking and, at, and goes in savagely. And Black Angel is like, then you're the one that's made the mistake, Simmons, because killing us won't stop any of this. Oh, yeah? But it'll stop you. And that's enough. One by one, I'm taking on my freaking enemies. Use your magic, Zab, says Ezra. Send Ezra back to heaven. What the hell's happening here? For a brief moment, Spawn links his necro power to Zab's magic, creating the slightest sliver that sucks Ezra through it. And where he gets sucked to is back to heaven, where he returned home to the same heaven that cast him out to begin with. He's known to all of them as just one thing, traitor and an outcast. And they all come in, and they're just going to 
jump off on him and you use your imagination what's gonna happen to Black Israel in this one right here. So back in the Exodus Foundation building, Terry stares at what he believes to be a damnation itself. I've seen you in my dreams as he looks to the crowd, yet he can't believe it. He can't help but to be drawn for it. You're brave, says the disruptor, which is Terry. Jason went underneath, coming all the way to face monster you can never defeat. So you try to destroy their most prized possession, which is the crown. You're merely just human. Why are you so damn driven? I had a dream, says Terry. And like you, I'm trying to survive this war. And the dream had a lot of catastrophe in it as we see this picture of Spawn and Wanda because in his dreams, he saw numbers that coalesced when 37 became 11. You know, that it, it, read that part right there. I just got tongue twisted. And when he saw a vision in that dream, it gave chills in his blood because Al and his new bride, Wanda, his wife were born in a frightening image. They were the rulers, but they were cruel. Willing to kill everyone if they ever had to. Even if it meant killing Wanda's own children, Cyan, Kate, and Jake. And Jason Wynn, disruptors, like, what catastrophe are you talking about? Have you seen this? What have you seen? Before Jason can answer, a remnant from Spawn Battles appears. Before you die, God said, tell me, where is Israel, says the disruptor. Vanquish, said Spawn. You'll meet the same fate if you don't give me that damn crown. Simmons, the man knows what the crown can do because as powerful Afro Spawn is. He was in line when he spoke to Terry from the throne when he said, you may have to stop me if all this becomes too much. And that's a callback to issue number 10 or 11. I believe it's 10. The red, black, white, and red panel of Spawn. He knows he could bring her back. And as much as he tried to, die, to deny it all, Al has given into the thought of being reunited with her. And he'll lead an army without them knowing it just to find her. All hail to the king. And that is the end of this issue. This is definitely a gangster ass issue with King Spawn. I don't know that, I don't think this is the end of the story arc. I don't know. But in terms of storytelling, the story is gangster. The art is insane. And the six pages or seven pages are just duking it out with Black Ezra and all the battle and the intense battle scenes with it. You cannot, the, the price of this book is worth it just for that. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Before we go into this issue, we're just gonna sum up what happened previously. The God Throne may have been destroyed, but Spawn has taken the crown and his place as ruler. Black Azrael has been banished to heaven and the quarter priests are now under Al's command. So it's time, time to show them what happens if Al opens the dead zones. Portals that were used by heaven and hell to place their soldiers on earth whenever they wanted. It has been happening like this as long as anyone can remember. Then Al locked him. Those trapped on earth, he's been haunting them down ever since, one by one, and these quarter priest warriors, they all sacrificed themselves, hoping to hear him say, I'll open them, and they emerge from Spawn's body. He's got no choice because now his wife's soul is at stake. But first, he needs to know if who's lying and if any of them are lying. And we see disturbers like, look, look, you know, Al, I know you would do the right thing. Al, you've always been. And Spawn's like, call me king and bring me Wanda's body from the green. Yes, of course, my lord. And he's Israel needs to negotiate with Gaia first, says Disruptor, so he can deliver your request. Where can I find him? Oh, you won't, says Spawn. Israel's gone. This is your job now. You'll negotiate for her body into Winter Green. And if you value your head, you won't fail me. Whoa, what about uh, Fitzgerald, says Disruptor? He's on the run. He'll tell the others, and they'll try to stop you. No, they won't. Spawn listens to Disruptor's warning, thinks for a moment, then simply smiles. Terry Fitzgerald is the least of his problems. And Terry told me he had a dream. He said he saw you in that dream, slaughtering and butchering his children, cut off their limbs and burn them. And Spawn's like, whoa, Disruptor, you can't tell me all that because Terry was mistaken. It'll be much worse than that. So what the freak is Spawn doing? He's playing a game of chess. As a boy, he played it with his grandfather hundreds of times. It taught him to think, to be patient, and at times to let your opponent think they are winning until you show them you're setting up a trap for and they fall into that trap. Since becoming Spawn, he's been doing the same thing, moving people into places by force, by trickery, by telling them what they want to hear. Now his, as for Spawn Superior, Al Superior before he became Spawn, Jason Wynn, he had him shot in the wild of Botswana and then burned him alive. From that moment on, he's been playing, He's been playing not an opponent, but a thing, a thing called evil. Spawn is the one moving all the chess pieces down, at least in his eyes. And Spawn's like, look, man, I've gone against pawns. I've gone against bishops. I've gone against knights. And we see all the illustration right there and the rook. But now I have a chance to bring my queen back. Meanwhile, in the dark marsh of the New Jersey Great Swamp, Ordeal, a minion sent by a creature called Nightmare Spawn, wanders purposely through the aging woods. It's like he has labor breathing. And he asks, show yourself. I'm not here to play games. 
I don't want you to play it says a voice. I want you to do me a favor. And it's a kid, a young voice. Komox, the hero, a godlike beast who has bonded with this child through ordeal, is unaware of the vital information. Instead, this demon is driven by instincts to find innocent victims, especially those with their precious few innocent years life on their side, and fill them with shocks of horror so devastated they'll be haunted by them for the remainder of their natural lives. I know you're hiding, and I know you're there. Ordeal's confused. Why isn't this little one scared? Stop hiding! And he smacks the chest pieces off the board. Why is this symbolism from what Spawn said earlier? Something is wrong, says Ordeal. And we see this creature come up from behind. As a child swings his arm in rage, so too does Komox, the child's protector. It mimics the child's every move while adding battering assaults of its own. Does that make this hero a puppet or a servant? I don't know. Time will tell. We'll find that out later. But he clobbers Ordeal, puts him on the ground, and any threats like like that will be handled accordingly. I'm here for the boy, says Ordeal. I have free reign, my master said over anyone who beats that mission. What this hellish being wasn't prepared for is that every wound he inflicts on Komox's body, it replicates on the boy, but it also works in reverse. Boom! Punches him in the face. Their bond and transformation far from complete means the boy and Komox will battle and bleed together. And his shadow goes up and tells him, stop! You're both here, so we could talk about King Spawn. Who says Comox? From the shadows, it comes the voice of an unlikely ally. But who is it? It's someone who knows the rules of this game and its politics. Stay hidden, gather allies, strike. These are the tenets of war. Remain deep in the shadows until you can snuff out any light that might expose you. Then join your enemies when you thrust them into darkness. At which point you tell them a soulless war is coming. Now, we see Spawn up on the roof, and guess what? He's just looking down, and just as this dark, cloaked specter surveying New York denizens below is about to unleash ungodly forces against humanity, we see this raven come up, and Spawn grabs the raven, crushes it, and Spawn, knowing the existence of this hellborn blackbird, is a bad omen. You're, go you're going on a fool's errand, says Raven Spawn, and they'll never let you return from it, and we see him emerge from out of nowhere, just, you know, whatever, you know, between the patches of space, between the bodies of a hundred more such birds, Flying in Spawn's direction, Spawn takes a glimpse at him, and it's Raven Spawn, a death knight of Malfoza's southernmost army. It appears news of Spawn's action has traveled fast. Raven, don't interfere, not now. It isn't your time. My time, says Raven. I don't serve you. None of the hell spawns do. Or has your arrogance blinded you to that reality? It won't be me. It'll be every hell spawn. If you open that portal, that'll come for you. Because it'll impact every spawn now on Earth. All of us will feel it immediately. Don't you understand that spawn? You're trying to take over the mantle. It'll, it'll corrupt you. Force you to destroy everything. None of us are strong enough to resist it. Not even you, Simmons. And if you think some low-level quarter priest underling is going to help you, then you're too far gone for any help. Besides, you needn't worry about Trader Zab or his important powers. One of my flock has gone to pay him a visit and we see this raven just going to work on this brother with his eyes and just keeps going at him, keep going at him. We want him and it's kind to know how much we disapprove of them getting involved in any of this. We're sure they're gonna get the message. And so must you, Simmons. You want to commit suicide? Fine! Do it on your own. You don't get to drag us with you. That right. Well, I didn't ask you, says Spawn. He smashes him through the church, pushes them. They go into this battle. And guess what? Spawn's like, you're going to get some of the smoke. As Raven struggles to move, he realizes it's not the portal's opening he should be fear most. It's the man capable of closing him in the first place. And it's not a crown they should be afraid of. It's the man who wears it. They took something from me, says Al. I intend on getting it back. So send as many hell spawns demons or angels you need to. I'm not hiding. I'll be where they can find me. But tell them, if they don't kill me the first time they try, I'll literally wipe them from existence. Huh! Like a vampire rising from the dead, Raven Spawn gets to his feet. You know what you're called behind your back, Spawn? They don't call you King Spawn. They call you King's Pawn. What? What King? Says Spawn. It's pathetic how easy you made it for them. Who's this new king, says Spawn? Whose pawn am I? And he clobbers him. Answer me! And he, and he clobbers him so hard he dislodges his lower jaw. Answer me! You honestly don't know. I said, tell me! Then if already won, says Raven Spawn, how can his brother still talk with no jaw? Then again, this is a comic book. I'm just gonna go with it. I think it's still pretty sick, you know? It's like your pain, that your my pain don't phase me, you know? Your spiral towards insanity then has already begun. Nothing will save us once it's complete. Before Spawn is able to throw another punch, Raven explodes, bursting into darkness. 
As they start to ascend, their cackles rise in volume, turning next into siren and screeches, human screeches, all hail King's Pond, their taunts, though only further inflame Al Simmons. If this is some sort of hellish game of chess, he plans on winning. All hail King's Pond. One way or another, he's getting his queen back, bringing Wanda back. No man, devil or spawn, will be able to stop him. And that's where we end this issue. I love the plot twist right here. You gotta love it when someone from behind the scenes is pulling the strings. And also, Spawn is being played and usually his CIA trained and he's been a Spawn for how long now? He doesn't get played that much and someone is playing him that's a higher form of power. And I wanna know who that is. I thought this book was gangster. I absolutely love this issue. I don't know which direction Keek Spot is gonna go in, but I love the plot twists and plot turns that go with it. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Previously on issue number 13, Spawn was led into a trap by the mysterious Raven Spawn. Raven Spawn was quickly dispatched by L, but was that the plan all along? So we begin this issue with Clown. I mean, didn't we recall in Gunslinger Spawn that Clown and Violator merged into one, but they could split the two? But he merged into this form to make himself less imposing, less of a threat, more endearing in a weird kind of hell kind of way, you know? So if Spawn is being used in this epic game of war, who, if anyone, is the puppet master? And Clown is like, no, I'll never bend a knee to Spawn or anyone else. You want to be a servant? Go ahead, not me. What about you, Ordeal? Did you do what I suggested? Ordeal is the red brother. Did. The red brother with the horns sent by nightmare who that's his master i did my master gave his blessing for what says comax the kid oh dear boy you still have so much to learn and what ordeal is he's a vessel sworn to deliver misery from his lord called nightmare my body contains secrets and powers others only utter in their dreams jealousy blasphemy sin i can grow any of these shameful deeds i manifest them make them all seem so real i enter the traits you wish you didn't have and wake them up then i watch as they let their hearts turn black soulless so in other words he creates nightmares for his victims and the kid is like are you watching someone now and he's like i am but like everyone else he doesn't know it he's so focused on his own fears he's oblivious to what's really coming this way so certain that spawn is haunting him he's not sleeping and he's barely eating that's where I meet him, in his liminal state between sleep and wake, where I feed him his fears and paranoia. And that guy is Terry Fitzgerald. Remember in the previous spawn, uh, King Spawn issues, Terry wants to take the throne, he blew up the throne, but he's the only real threat to stop Spawn, or King Spawn as we should say it. So, meanwhile, while he's in his room, cooped up, waiting for Spawn's impending attack, at least so he themes. A hooker and her John, that's all they are. But in his current state, Terry convinces himself they're assassins, given their mission by Spawn. And they're like, no, please shoot. Who sent you? Did he send you? He wants me dead, doesn't he? And he points his gun at him. Then you're gonna have to work for it. I'm not gonna make it easy, you hear me? And what, wearing subhuman skins trying to trick me? You don't think I know who you are? And this hooker's like, look, baby, don't know what you're on or what's happening in your head, but let's just all take a deep breath, okay? And this hooker tries to calm him down, but Terry won't be doing all that. His chest is pumping so hard, he can't hear anything. And in his vision, courtesy of Ordeal, he sees spiders crawling out around. That's a freaking nightmare right there. Go, get out of here. And they're like, okay, we're going, we're going, we're going. And Terry's like, tell him I'm ready, tell him to come. No, we're not ready for this. So he shoots it right when they escape. And the kid's like, what's wrong with him? And Ordeal's like, he sees monsters everywhere. But he's also the one person Spawn said could stop him. And the kid's like, so he can't see us? No, not in his few state. Good, says Clown, that makes him useful. Go ahead and call the others like a good boy, says Clown. And Terry does make a phone call. And whoever he's calling, who he could be calling, I need you now, says Terry. And the kid's like, yo, if his friends are coming, why do you need us? Can't they fight Spawn? Or deals like, no, they can't. Not if they don't know who he's a threat. By the time they do, it may be too late for all of us. And if no one is left to reason with him, he'll rule a throne like a tyrant bent on destroying heaven and hell. Then who will be left to stop him? He'll burn everything in his path with the throne's powers added to his own. The only ones he'll leave breathing will be his slaves. And what you see is Spawn's mind, the future he wants. Terry, medieval Spawn, Jessica Priest, AKA she Spawn looking good too. And even though she's in flames and they're all in flames being tormented, kind of like a lake of fire, tormented by Spawn, Spawn dreams of burning them all to ashes, wiping clean his entire past. That's what will happen if any faction of him succeeds in making him king. Then an intruder breaks ordeal spell on Spawn's mind. Kah! 
Black Raven comes in. And we all know it's Raven Spawn, but they don't know that yet. We as the reader knows that from the previous issue. But both sides stand side assessing one another. The Black Intruder is first to assert his position. How can you defeat an enemy whose identity you don't know? You're flailing. Who is the king? That's the only question you should be asking. And when you answer that, then you should ask yourself, why do I think that's true? And the board responds, it's Spawn, he's the king. Then my next question is, why do you believe that? And Kyle's like, or you said you had your master's permission. Or like, yo, man, I did. Then why that thing is here? Or deals like, it shouldn't be. And it could trap us inside Spawn's mind if we don't leave now. You've betrayed us, says Clown, and he runs out of here. I didn't know. And the boy's like, I don't understand. It's just a bird. No. My boy, I am not just a bird. I'm a raven. And we get all these montages of what happened in the previous issue with Raven's encounter with King Spawn. And he definitely mindfucks Spawn, and it's definitely in a good way. But is it really a mindfuck, or does Raven really have, is there really a true king behind, or or what, 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 did, what did Raven call him? King Spawn instead of King Spawn. I'm Raven, and like you, I'm fighting to contain chaos that exploded everywhere. This is a crusade, my boy. Are you ready for that, says Raven. And I love how death is carved into his tongue. You've been chosen, not because you're like the others, you're better than them. Gaia, Clown, Spawn, everyone, you are like the Kingslayer with a great mission ahead of you. But only if you can figure out who's really the king. But first, you must survive. Master, the boy doesn't yet. You shouldn't be here, says Spawn. He knows they're in his mind. You've sealed your fate. And he unleashes a court of priests from his previous conquest to unleash and conquer them and grab them and detain them. We need a shadow, a passageway, says Ordeal. Well, the boy's like, make one. I travel in them. I can't build them, says Ordeal. But Raven can. It understands the separation between dreams and nightmares. And it revels in knowing that if it helps these three fools, that will anger Spawn even further. So it offers a refuge, a way to escape the dark depths of Spawn's mind. By an act that visually, most everyone will label an impossible and it's as insane. And they go into this portal inside of his mouth. And I love how Raven Spawn transforms into this large raven and swallows them into the shadows back to another harsh reality. And he tells him, it's not my nature to save others and I won't make it a habit. But you, all of you know the same thing I do. Spawn must be stopped. He doesn't wield the throne's powers, but he's deluded himself into thinking he can save his wife's soul and the way he believes that it can be done is to become Hell's ruler. If that happens, he'll push all of us to bend the knees to his servitude. I'll not do that. I'll not lower my head to him and neither should any of you. And then Clown's like, you better tread carefully, Raven. You're coming late to this party. There's some who might not take too kindly to your interference. And Raven's like, I don't give a damn what they think. What do you think? Why, says Clown. Then show me. Let me see if you're anything more than just a joke, Clown. And he, he's not a joke, but he's in his form because he wants to come after his endearing. And then Comox is like, this is a waste of time. Clown's like, shut up. This is your fight. You see, Raven's been wanting to make himself relevant for centuries because he won't accept the real reason he keeps failing is because he doesn't have what it takes. Isn't that right, Raven? You're using us. Oh, yeah, says Raven. Why don't you tell them, Clown? Tell them why you're so angry. You want the throne for yourself, don't you? And for an awkward moment, all eyes fall on the clown. If what Raven says is true, then all of them have been used. And Clown's like, yo, look, I don't want the throne. I just don't want a future ruled by any hell spot. I've seen what that looks like. I've been there. And we're all slaves to Simmons, dead wife, until it all disappears. I'm not with all that. So like Babylon, the greatest city in the Bible, once it was conquered, then it became dust. It became nothing. And all those that vied for it, all who battled for it and murdered for it, they became dust as well. As they continue their debate, none are aware how close their enemy actually is. And we see Spawn watching them from a not so far distance. Too close for comfort, but just far enough where they don't notice him. What must it be like for Spawn to see his enemies and his kindred plotting against to conspire him? Why? because they're afraid he might someday destroy the world. They've all become irrational in pursuit of attaining each of their goals. That's why he sat on the God throne. He knew its existence would eventually drive everyone around into madness. 
including quite possibly himself. All in the quest to find the woman he loves, and we see Spawn disrupted in the quarter priest that he conquered in the previous couple issues behind him. Did you speak to Gaia about raising Wanda, says Spawn? And disrupt is like she accepted your terms, but she needs your wife's soul to do it, which is hidden behind one of the dead zones. They've been trying to get Spawn to open the dead zones for a while. Is this another mind play right here? But Disruptor continues, Gaia will preserve Wanda's body until you're able to bring that to her. And when he does, Babylon once again will rise. So Disruptor asks him again, in the meantime, what do you want to do with these traitors? Time's running out. And Spawn's like, let them plant. And to what end, they're asking. It'll show us who's really controlling their groups at Spawn. Whether it's one of them or someone from afar, once they get that answer, we'll tear them apart. All of them. And what if their leader continues to hide, says Disruptor? Then I'll find him on my own. There's only one person that can actually stop me. And that person is Terry and Spawn is hoping it's not him who's their leader because they're friends, not really, but he doesn't want to go that route. And we see Terry's like, I don't care what you have to do, just get him here. I'm tired of hearing excuses, I need help. No, I won't calm down. You said to call when I was sure, well, I'm sure we need to take down Al Simmons now. And that's where we end King Spawn issue number 14. Yo, man, this series, this issue, this comic is starting to become more intense more gangster as we go deeper into it personally i think king spawn is one of my favorite issues along with gunslinger spawn but if he asked me to pick and choose between gunslinger spawn and king spawn man bro don't don't give me that decision i want those decisions that's too tough no pressure it is pressure but this issue was great fantastic i had a hell of a time reading it and i know you will too link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry with all that being said before we get into the content, I'm just going to sum up what happened in the previous issue. A new group has emerged from the shadows. A group bent on the destruction of Spawn, but not all is what it seems. Now in this panel, we see Clown overlooking everyone like a chess piece. It's kind of like breaking the fourth wall. He's relaying his plants to us as a reader in a very creative way as a chessboard because in a couple issues before, Raven Spawn was telling King Spawn, Al Simmons Spawn, that he is not a King Spawn. He is King's pawn and look at him as a pawn on the chessboard as clown is directing and misdirecting everything and manipulating everyone on the chessboard he's thinking that everyone just thought he was a fat foolish clown always getting knocked around by spawn and he so he mocks him what you think he spawn has all the answers that he has it all figured out do you think he'll actually lead you guys to victory he won't you and he are the same but you can't see that it's why politicians lie so easily because at our core we're gullible you know, bosses and spouses do the same thing. And he mocks Al Simmons again. And us as a reader, I'm thinking, when your wife is texting and texting her friend, oh, it's just about some work stuff. Do you think she's actually texting at work? Don't worry about it. Because believing our own lies is easier than accepting the truth. <laughs> and Clown is just really mind messing with Spawn right now. That attitude creates pawns like Terry. And sometimes you have to sacrifice the pawn. You want the real truth? This pot belly mask I'm wearing, that's the old me. The new me is now built like a brick house. And that's a reference to Editor Knows Gunslinger Spawn, issue number seven through nine. And feel free to check out the Gunslinger Spawn playlist at the end of this video, and I'll put the link in the description too if you wish to check out those reviews. But now, we only see what we want, don't we? Until it's too late, says Khan, as he continues his dialogue. Well, it's your move, out because the game is nearly over and you're running out of moves. Do nothing and never get to lay eyes on your wife ever again. Do something and I'll make sure when you do see her, I'll have enough power to destroy you both. See, when it comes to manipulation, I'm a grandmaster, says Clown. It's why he's called into this. He knows all the pieces and what they all want. This is what Raven Spawn was talking about. And you'll never guess who sent me here, Al. It was Wanda. She picked me, not you. And this is just mindless messing with Spawn right now. Like, So Spawn tells Raven, he's using you, Raven. You think it's Raven? Adam, you were called here, told to turn on me, the evil spawn says spawn, to Raven spawn. And Raven spawn looks at him like, I already know what you've become. Now in chess, as Clown is clearly demonstrating, it's called the bird's opening. It means when you fly into battle, even if it leaves everything you have open to attack. And for Clown, he lives and breathes creating chaos. He needs spawn confused. Morana and Komox need to be distracted to fight meaningless battles. Disruptor and Raven Spawn are trying to savage one another. Everyone's confused, fight one another in this meaningless battle that 
that clown is creating. They're all getting played and none of the pieces have stopped long enough to see the moves ahead. This is pure joy to the clown because the best way to make others blind to your own actions is to keep them distracted while you maneuver around them. Morana could have been useful to the clown, but chose to side with some of God's outcasts and her and Ordeal are going at it. And I love this panel right where she puts her thumbs in his eyes, but because he has the illusion or the power of creating nightmares and just very demonic and haunting images, he has this haunting image of tongue just going down there all over her. And the thing with Ordeal is he can't be trusted, so being loyal to the clown was never going to be in the cards because the problem is neither of the sides will be willingly step aside for their own to let clown leave. So having them attack each other's throats is is the best thing instead because they're not going to be loyal to clown long enough for clown to do what he really wants so let them play out for one another because that's what clown loves to do these battles will inevitably draw other heroes so those who have yet to chose sides given his new kinship with the young boy Komox brute force causes more pain than he comprehends because Komox is tied to the boy so when he gets injured the boy gets injured too and that's what happened with god said slices Komox's chest it creates a searing pain in the boy Komox is tied to. Now, meanwhile, with Disruptor and Raven Spawn going at it, Disruptor's like, I don't care how strong you are. I've seen your kind before. It says Disruptor, you're just another soldier to me. And these Raven Spawns or these Ravens are going pecking at Disruptor, back, 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 back. and it's probably like a supernatural, a lot more stronger peck than an earthly Raven. So Disruptor tells him, and soldiers can be planned for as he emits his energy blast. Get these Ravens off of me, son, and tell your mama to save me a plate. We hungry. I'm sorry. That thing with Tyrese, we hungry for Fast and Furious 2, never gets old in me. But anyways, back to the review. Despite all this turmoil swirling around Spawn, Spawn says there's something important. Clown is nowhere to be found. He's like, all this is going on. Where the hell is Clown? So he looks. Spawn understands a great strategist hides their moves. Not wanting to tip their position until it's time to strike. They'll sacrifice whoever they need in the quest for disruption. All in the hopes of coaxing their enemy to step into the trap they've laid. So Spawn goes deep into the woods, looking for Clown. I know you're here, Clown. I can smell you. We see Clown just lurking, predatory style. Interesting, after all these years throwing insults, it's all you've got. I was hoping you were dead, says Spawn. And that's a reference to Spawn issue 301, which we did do a review on. I'll put the card up top of the link in the description as well, if you wish to watch the review, because I was a gangster way in Spawn issue 301, but let's go back into King Spawn. Don't mind killing you again, says Spawn. As he nears, the demented Joker simply vanishes, causing Spawn's anchor to grow. Hmm, <clears throat> parlor tricks. Is that what you devolved into? I doubt it. You're here for a reason. I know you and your narcissism, says Spawn. And then, he, all he, and the trick is over. He just throws a rock at Spawn's head. That's the wish to inflict pain, but just to fuck with him. Wow, you're gonna let me catch you off guard with the rock, says Violator, or Clown. Don't know why you're here or how you return, but that assert disguise you're wearing, lose it. Save it for the other suckers, because I'm guessing Spawn is implying that he knows. I mean, because Clown did tell that this is not my real suit. I'm a, you know, I'm a whole shit house. But what Clown tells Spawn, why he wears it, it's funny. I think I'll just keep it. It drives you crazy. So we gonna do this or what? And yes, we gonna do this, says Spawn. He runs at him, tackles him. It's why years ago, Clown killed Spawn's wife. So every time they meet after that, he'd have Simmons in a state of rage, like right now. And we see explosions going on in the city nearby. Take a look, dear boy, see what's going on? The humanity you sworn to save, your followers, they're under assault. The quarter priest, the ones that worship you so much, they want you to choose like I want you to choose. Be a king on hell or be a king on earth. Choose hell and you'll be reunited with your queen Wanda. Wanda will be your wife again. Clown finishes it off with, not only will Wanda be your wife in hell again, she will not be Terry's wife. So we go to the panel where Terry Fitzgerald's brain has been disoriented lately, caused by Spawn and his enemies. But despite this, when he heard the booms go off, he hit the streets. Scared or not, he had to see what he can do. Almost immediately, he's met by a zella of Psalms 137, the court of priests, the soldiers. But keep in mind, even in this state, Terry has many years of military training under his belt. So he just goes off and shoots him without even looking. That's a gangster way where he's just not even looking. Like a no-look gunshot Patrick Mahomes kind of pass with the gun bullets. That's Terry right there just shooting him. And that training is kicking in full throttle right now. But unfortunately for Terry, all this carnage has attracted the attention of more than just local police and firefighters. 
it's made of the target of another warrior from this unholy war. And that warrior is the Redeemer. And he calls out to Terry. Terry, who's doing this? You said nothing about bombings. You said you needed help with Spawn. Was that who Terry called in the previous issue, Redeemer? He wouldn't have done something like this. So who did this, says Redeemer, as he asked Terry that question. Those that are converting out, the ones telling him he can save Wanda. He didn't believe them at first, but he's gone crazy. And Redeemer's like, yeah, I'll reckon. I can contest to that. His flight patterns alert him to Psalms 137 loyalties. He takes out armed foot soldiers and whatever they might be transporting. And say he continues as vehicles begin flying. Then something new happens. Spawn is flying and Redeemer's like, you fly, I do what I need to. But right now, I need your help despite what Terry may have told you. Okay, all right, so Spawn continues on. So we can save these people or we can waste our time talking. And Redeemer's like, lead the way. We're gonna finish this conversation up later. So they neutralize any immediate threats by necroplasm and beams, taking apart the terrorist cell below. But questions linger. How is Clown tied to all this? And what exactly does the Clown want for Spawn? Friends and foes along with heaven and hell pulling their own strings and being drawn into this messy battle, Earth sits on a fragile cusp. Though they claim to be followers of the King Spawn, he has no problem punishing them. And as this battle ends, Redeemer, Comox, Ordeal, and Raven Spawn surround Spawn. And, they, and Spawn tells them there's others, I need to find them too. No, says Redeemer, I've seen what happens next, what you become in the future. If you leave now, their side wins and you never recover from it. You can't become their king. And Disruptor from high above tells him, it's too late for that Redeemer. Spawn will write his own history. A history much different than the one Terry has dreamed of because no one is going to stop Spawn from doing what he wants. And right now, what he wants is to find two more pieces that he needs to join his side. The end is near, though intentionally, he leaves some believing they've already won. The king has fallen this clown. Checkmate, Spawn. Checkmate. <laughs> And that's where we end this issue. Now, personally, I like the mind fucking over here going on with Spawn and the Clown, or Clown for my mess with the Clown with the Spawn. Ooh! But anyways, it's it, it's fun. I ain't got nothing else to say. I mean, King Spawn, and I kind of dig the new art. It's more gritty. It's more grit. It's more raw, in my opinion. The other art, I forgot who the artist was. It was just cleaner, but this kind of fits it. I mean, I, to go along with the story too. Now, how the, will this continue to play out, and how will this unfold? Who knows? But that's what we're here for. So, if you haven't subscribed to this channel now, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Rated Comics channel right now because we do cover all the King Spawns, all the Gunslinger Spawns, all the Scorch, as well as the Spawn comics too. Previously on King Spawn, the board has been set and the pieces are moving. But in this chess match, even the players are being played. When everyone is out for themselves, whose side is anyone really on? For instance, Raven called him a pawn. Clown called Spawn a failure. The court of priests called him a king. Gaia, the goddess of nature, called him the man who could raise Wanda from the dead. Spawn couldn't care less why they chose those words. He doesn't give a damn about their reasons. He's concerned only about what could be lost or won through his actions. And each piece of this battle can swing in either direction. Like the pathways called the dead zones that once allowed angels and demons to exist on our world whenever their masters wished, or mankind who has been so manipulated since the dawn of their creation that they don't even know that they're being used anymore. They've even been given that manipulation a term that most willingly embrace. It's called religion. Their souls are being the currency of that evil's trades. Regardless of the pain that so many millions have endured, suffering over the deaths of those caught in that chess game, heaven and hell continue to play, it's why Spawn closed the dead zones. He wanted to shout out anyone, shout out any intruders into our planet, hoping to make it safer from their reach. Then he would hunt those down one by one, those that God and Satan had already placed here, those that were now trapped on Earth. And when their kind is finally gone, then a new Eden can begin by stopping the souls of man from leaving our own realm. But things have not gone as Spawn had hoped. While tainted angels learn to serve and be obedient because with no humans left to abuse, heaven now takes out their own and sacrifices their own. Instead, demonic souls of hell are burnt as they learn what their eternal fates are really meant to be. While on earth, we have continued to bow to those forces as we have for centuries. 
priests are still being priests, but underneath there's something way more sinister going on and our blissful ignorance guiding us through each day. Fortunately though, Spawn's bliss wasn't from ignorance. It was from focusing on training both his body and mind. So now he's aware of the cosmic war games being fought. He takes pleasure in knowing those who've preyed on mankind are now feeling the pain and fear themselves. He likes that. He liked that they were stuck because every minute they are trapped on Earth is a decade in their own room. And essentially, they are slowly rotting here on Earth, accelerating their loss of sanity, causing them to do even more atrocious acts upon humans, forcing all of them to splinter into competing fiefdoms. Now the answer to Spawn's question steps forward from the abyss. He has built armies forming south of hell and north of heaven, and they're being led by brimstones and he wants spawn to open up the dead zones or don't it won't matter either way we'll control everything the moment you make a slightest mistake it'll be a signal to invite all of us in and you'll not stop the flood that comes from heaven hell and their masters masters hell and heaven have new lords too and this brother is just like yeah spawn we'll do what you got to do do what you want to do either way you're going to mess up and when you do we come in for that axe and in heaven, these angels are commencing the hunt. The hunt is the punishment that Black Azra's leader of the court of priests banished from Earth by Spawn. Remember that in King Spawn 8, 9, or 10? I'll, it's in one of those issues, but I did cover that. It was in a previous King Spawn issue. He now runs for his life in the corridors of heaven as he has been branded a traitor to God. Having fallen to the hell, Spawn called Al Simmons Spawn. And he tells Spawn, he foreshadowing in this panel, that guess what? They will come for you too, Spawn. And Spawn knows this. He's already already knowing this. He's a king now. Then come. Stop hiding. I'm getting tired of you talking about all this stuff. How are you going to bring me down and destroy me? Just do it. But I see you too. All of you. And I'm also hunting. He sees Soul Crusher lost in limbo from the Scorch. He sees the green where Gaia thinks she can stop him. He sees the Sin Devourers in the Scorch. And his only friend, Terry, who means to kill him. This panel right here just clearly confirms that even though Spawn's taking a backseat in the Scorch, a Spawn issue, he is clearly taking it. He's in the shadows and he knows what's going on and he's watching this movie just play out. And in this panel right here, Spawn, Godson, Disruptor, and Angela, they're all looking at the dead zones being opened is why they're all here. Disruptor's like, okay, what's your plan? You want us to charge through the dead zones and you're gonna take the empty throne? And Spawn's like, charge in? Yes. Reclaim my wife? Yes, but I won't be the one going in. All of you will go in instead. And Angel's like, this isn't our task, it's yours. And Spawn makes it clear, you guys are my servants. So my tasks are yours. That's what it's meant to be king. You dare challenge me? And as this dead zone slightly opens up, we see monsters, a couple of them seeping through over there. So Spawn's like, but you can have your freedom back if you can accomplish one mission. Find my wife. After that, the throne is yours. Even though these monsters are seeping through, it's not bothering Spawn. So the group of villains hesitate. They're being asked for it to do a suicide mission. So it's not an attainable goal. This is suicide. And Godson is the first of them to fall. And he begs for somebody to save him. So Disruptor having a brain is like, what good are we if we're killed before we find the throne or your wife's soul? He asked that to Spawn. Find her soul first. Then by saving my queen, the throne will be yours. Meanwhile, in New York City, a rundown watering hole near the river, Terry plans his friend's death, Al Simmons. So Terry has seen what Al Simmons has started to become, and what he knows is what it's leading to, and it's not good. And that was definitely highlighted in previous King Spawn issues. So he must make a list of people he can trust. Ryan, Jessica is a couple of them, as well as those he needs to protect. Nice to see you, Terry, as his hand goes over the shoulder. And it is Al Simmons himself. I was beginning to think you were trying to avoid me. And Terry's like, you're here to kill me, aren't you? And he's nervous about that. Depends. And if that's Jessica who you're calling, don't. And he was calling Jessica like, Spawn is already knowing what's happening. It's like he's already three steps ahead. Or is he? But because whenever a person's downfall, when they're that smart and that powerful, is their arrogance. And I hope Spawn doesn't play that arrogant part too, you know, too hard because that could be his downfall too. So how does this work then, says Terry? You take me outside and I disappear for good? Spawn's like, nah, you're being paranoid. We both want the same thing. Your emotions are blinding you to that fact. It's too bad because you're better than that much better i'm trying to figure a way to get you to trust me again trust you says terry why should i do that tell me please i'm all ears because the visions i'm having visions show you killing everyone i care about 
Okay, he says, now let's talk about Bogota. And in Bogota, Colombia back in 1985. And Spawn tells Terry, remember the rebel group trying to steal back the drug lands from Escobar? You were as thrilled as I was to be there. And the question we have to ask ourselves, why was the U.S. trying to fight the country's drug wars? Same as always to repay some political debt, says Terry. No, it's Uncle Sam's strange bedfellows. And guess what? Whatever the reason is, it's the job they signed for. They got direct orders to go in. And Terry didn't know Al had been on this case for a few weeks, working the angles, gathering intel, and still he put Terry in that truck. So Spawn tells him, follow my lead, even though it's Al Simmons in that form. And Terry's like, okay, I got you back. And Spawn's like, don't ask any questions because Al was going to go outside of his given orders okay so I don't need you asking me that question just let me do this and that's what we're doing and the thing is Al never intended to help those rebels he was going to sabotage some of their drug supply lines and Terry well he was a useful pawn in Al's plan that night and Al tells Terry you're a tracker we need to go east and find Sakari Sakari you're playing both sides says Terry and now back in present time Al Sim is like exactly but you also remember Terry playing both sides got us out of Colombia alive. We followed our orders that wouldn't have happened. You saw the report. So tonight I did my own version of Bogota. I made allies with enemy rebels, setting them to do a job they likely won't come back from. So yes, I am playing both sides. This is what's keeping me alive and this is what's helping me win this game. And if I'm right about that again, we win again, old buddy. Sorry I had to scare you, but I couldn't let anyone know. Those visions you had, they were seeing the same ones too. So I had to play the role. And Terry feigns a smile. It wasn't a role. Al wasn't pretending when he said he'll kill everyone to get what he wants. Well, then I guess we're back in business then, says Terry. And Al was like, tomorrow we'll start then. Until then, let me buy you another drink. So Terry's a good soldier too. For now, he'll do what Al says. And with that, the friends drink the night away. Now, while in the depths of hell, Disruptor, the man once known as Jason Wynn, marches through the mayhem of an afterlife disrupted by civil war. I was sent by the king to find his queen, says Disruptor. Stay on your knees, boy, because whatever master you serve has betrayed you. You think he just happened to let you in from the outside to help him? Then we've got a lot to talk about. Who's your leader, says Brimstone. As Disruptor unravels the tale, he begins spilling the beans to Brimstone. This new monster god listens intently to the story of how a mere human has now become a king to so many soldiers that once kneeled to no one. He wants to know what's made them so afraid of this new king. And that's where we end this issue of King Spawn, issue number 16. Look, I, obviously, I think this is gangster. I love this new character of Brimstone. I wonder if that's the first appearance of him, but he's interesting. Anytime someone dares challenge Spawn to the throne, I think it's interesting. And this guy looks like he means business too. So the Disruptor and the Quarter Priest have invaded hell in search of Wanda Blake's soul only to come face to face with Brimstone. Brimstone, a being that has taken the slow drag of eternity to fashion a brigade of trapped souls within one attempt, Earth. What are you doing, Disruptor, says Marana as Disruptor's on his knees. It's not what we came here for. Go easy, Marana. The guy with the gun isn't in the mood. You dogs are from Earth, that's good because you're gonna take me back there, but first. You're going to learn to kneel too. He pulls his trigger, but it's not just a bullet that's released. It's a sentient weapon that he unleashes, catching Marana off guard as none of the court has seen his weapon before. And their hesitation costs Godsend his life. Brimstone tells Disruptor, bend your knee, then take me to Earth, and I might let you sew your friend's head back on. I'll help you get the soul you're looking for, then we head out. You good with that, soldier? Yes, sir, but you need to know something first, says Disruptor. And so Disruptor unfolds the tale of Spawn. The prophecy that he will open the dead zones, becomes Hell's King, then lays waste to the world as we know it. And that was also prophesied in Spawn 174 or 175, as we did do a full story review on that. Link in description, by the way. Brimstone shares too. He could care less about kings or thrones. Territory is what he craves. Earth is his prized territory. Then he adds, Wanda is here, but she isn't exactly what you guys are expecting. Back on Earth, Terry Fitzgerald questions his own loyalty to Spawn. And as they walk into this alley, Terry Fitzgerald's like, I don't usually follow people I'm afraid of into abandoned buildings. And Al Simmons is like, I can't control what you're afraid of. And this place isn't abandoned. The Psalms 137 group is still active. The rally around something. It was King Kate at first, but they wouldn't come out of hiding if they thought they weren't being protected. Protected? That's fairly ironic, says Terry. 
You got something you want to say, Terry? And Terry's like, I got a litany of things I want to say to you, bruh. Starting with Cyan. I haven't heard from my daughter for weeks. Why? I think you're hiding something from me. And Spawn is pissed. He's like, well, then pull the trigger. Go ahead. We both know it won't do a damn thing to me. And if it did, then how do you get your answers to your questions? So stop acting so damn crazy. As for Cyan, I don't know where she is, but she's aware she needs to hide while this war plays out. She's too easy of a target for them to use against you. But I can tell you this, another Spawn came to me saying someone's trying to use me. Someone who doesn't think I'm a king, they think I'm a pawn. So I went back to the beginnings of Psalms 137's first attack, and I love how he's referencing Raven Spawn, and that Raven Spawn was messing with Spawn's head. So Spawn goes to the beginning of the Psalms 137 attack. It's the gray sites of the kids that were killed. Guess what? Their headstones had all been marked by 137 and their families, they're missing. All of them. So whatever's going on in your head right now, Terry, I need you to drop it. And Terry's like, I got a family too. Then let me help you, both you and Cyan. And Terry is like, how? Like the way you helped Wanda get killed? And that just pisses Spawn off, but it's like, okay. Or the delusion of having you bring her back? You can't save any of us, says Terry. You're not worth the bullet. But begrudgingly, Terry follows out. So they go into the building and they're shocked at what they see. It's the parents. A year ago, a teacher following Psalms 137 sets off a bomb in his classroom, killing dozens of children along with himself. And I believe that's a reference to King Spawn issue number one. Which, by the way, guys, if you're new to this channel, we cover all the King Spawns on this channel, all the Gunslinger Spawns, all the Scorch, and Spawn 296 all the way up to the present time. And that event in King Spawn issue number one is what drew Spawn into the world of Psalms 137. Originally funded by the court of priests, some Psalm zealots had gone rogue. These independent members were all committed to the cause of bringing the end times to earth. And they're making good on that promise they made to Spawn. That if he didn't take the place as their king, they'd begin killing and the victim's blood will be on his hands. But Al Simmons knows one thing about terrorists like this. And they hear something in the distance. They enjoy the reaction to the chaos they cause. You hit the west wall. I'll take the north side, says Al. I'll be back and I'll circle back in 10 minutes, says Terry. For Terry, the things he's learned about cowards, they like to hide in the shadows where they can drag their victims away from prying eyes. <laughs> Gunshots always trigger Simmons. It turns a switch on in him. A switch his enemies usually wish they left alone. He smells sulfur, gunpowder, his enemy is near. Show yourself, says Spawn, but it doesn't. It always plays cat and mouse. You come to me, says the thing. Who are you? And then he goes into the shadow and what he encounters is this behemoth. He's a monster revered by Psalms 137 with a body like iron and a desire to attain the same goal as the cult. He too wants the end times and he he wants more. He wants Spawn on the throne directing the demise of Earth. He wants to watch the destruction of both heaven and hell. Spawn, he believes, can deliver that both to them. And Terry on the ground is like, ow, that thing, it's... And he struggles to get the words out of his mouth. And he's like, not alone. Let's keep that between us, whatever this smile is. And this is a sinister grin smile, like the Joker who laughs kind of smile. Al says Terry, but Al can't hear nothing. His ears are filled with the musings of death and destruction spewed from the tongue of that gigantic behemoth. We did not end with King Cade, says the behemoth. We watched, waited, they became, reborn. The court reconfigured itself, then cast breath into my lungs so that I will come to life for this moment, that I might join my makers to create an army like none before. The court of priests, the oracles of the green, together will bring forth a cleansing fire. Your kid killers, that's all you are, says Spawn. Delude yourself all you want. That won't change anything. You kill babies and their lomas. Go fuck your prophecies. Then stop us, says the behemoth. And that's exactly the invitation that Spawn wanted. That rage, that rage he needs at any and all that are involved with the slaughter of children has hit a boiling point. And when he unleashes that fury, it displays the reason hell chose Al to be a hell spawn in the first place. Surely you don't fall that easy after Spawn Spawn decks him in the face and cuts his arm off. You're not that pathetic. And he stands tall, puffs his chest. <laughs> Nearby, Terry calls out to his friend, but Al was deaf to it once more. As any outside noise is drowned by the sounds echoing through the main chamber for the beast, this behemoth has risen with the rage of its own. Let's find out which of us hell created to be more superior, says the behemoth. Though one of behemoth's arms is injured, 
He fought hundreds of battles with pain and agony where they accept the price for the honor to fight against his enemies. Tonight, the honor is focused on Spawn, and that ass is mine. We hungry. You've desecrated the work of thousands. They gave their souls so that a new king might rise and lead them so they won't have to suffer anymore. And Behemoth shoved a steel girder into his injured stump. They gave you everything, and he decked Spawn in the face. In war, you must do what you must. Spawn plays by that same exact rule. But before he can land his blow, the creature is gone like it was never there. Not even Spawn is used to that vanishing trick of this magnitude. But was that all it was? Just some hellish sadistic trick? Spawn quickly turns to other matters. Terry, are you there? Behind him, a shadow moves. Bohemoth again, he thinks? No. It's Oracle. Oracle appears with the Kingslayer, the boy whose body was vaporized in the school bombing. Remember Simon from King Spawn 2, King Spawn 3? Okay, he led Oracle to this place, sensing his mother was in danger. Hoping to help her, he instead finds only her dead remains. And though these inhabitants of the Green have their issues with Spawn, their first priority is to protect their own. To accomplish that, they too will need the dead zones to be open wide open and that's where we end this issue of king spawn ish number 17 hey man this comic book just gets better and better i ain't got nothing else to say about it man just get the comic book purchase the comic book link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry i just love where this story is going and actually going back into spawn history uh, spawn issue one and like i mentioned before doing the review on spawn 174 and 175 which is the rise of the gunslinger spawn the origin stories and this has been prophesized for a while i just love how it's all coming together and let's just keep this story going man it's great storytelling in the previous issue the quarter priests had been abandoned in hell while spawn battled out with the behemoth after that battle the oracle and the kingslayer like bishops and rooks on the chessboard they're trying to force spawn onto a throne he doesn't want the kingslayer a slain child whose body was aged from the five-year-old boy who died into that of an older warrior keep in mind he died in issue number one and later in the afterlife courtesy of king Cade in issue number three now he became kingslayer in issue number seven or eight i believe but we definitely covered all the issues of king spawn on this channel and i'll put the playlist at the end of the video as well but he's still a little boy who lost the one thing he cared about, his mother. So Gaia tells Spawn the gates of hell have been opened. It's where his mother was taken. And Gaia, along with those from the green, you will hope finer since you've abandoned your allegiance to the court of priests. The Oracle has softened her stance against Spawn. I don't need your kind of help, says Spawn, because all of you, this is on you, because you wouldn't let me look into my wife's body in the green. The court got emboldened. They thought if you could push me around, why not them? Now they're killing your own to get to me. And Kingslayer tries to go at Spawn like this is all your fault. And Spawn looks at him like, boy, you're just a little boy. You're not even close to being ready for war. Not by a long shot. And Kingslayer is like, well, maybe you're right. I'm not ready, but soon there'll be a day when you're wrong about that. And fortunately, it ain't today, so get back. And Kingslayer, all he can do is look at his dead mama right next to him in the behemoth. Mama, I'll save you. And Oracle tells Spawn, do you know the problem? The world, Al Simmons, is slowly falling apart. And the cruelty and the pain humans deliver to one another, it's only intensifying. You can feel it, can't you, Al? Feel that world is a little bit off. Everything becoming more unhinged. The conflicts, the violence, human deprivation is all getting worse. And each time the dead zones are shaken, more sin slips out and affects you mortals. And Spawn's like, you and Guy were the ones who wanted them opened. Oh, says Oracle, don't believe that lie, do you? You also you want them closed, but you also want your wife, Wanda? You can't have it both ways. You opened them because you wanted to see your wife. That's what she's telling them. And the longer you take to decide, the sicker and sicker this place becomes. With that, Oracle and the Kingslayer disappeared. Though they aren't the only ones lost in thin air, he goes to look for Terry. The room Terry took cover is still no marks and no signs, just his phone. The creature, the behemoth, was just a distraction. So Spawn thinks to himself they can somehow wear him down, then negotiate with him, then they clearly underestimated Terry. 
So Spawn steps into another room and he sees the Psalms 137 paint is still fresh on the floor. Terry is being used as leverage to talk Spawn into something he would never do, or he's being used as a shield to make sure Spawn doesn't kill them for what they did to the lost children's parents, and that's a reference to the last issue. Either way, Spawn intends to hunt them down like dogs. He just needs someone to find their scent. Enter Mark Rosen. Spawn calls him late at night and it doesn't matter. He knows it's late, but get on the damn computer. Once on the computer though, Spawn tells him there's security cameras where I'm standing running east on Points Avenue, the 400 block. A natural hacker that Mark is, he works through the hundreds of cameras of New York until he got something. He starts running code and he's not sure what he's looking at and then he sees it. It's Jericho. He's a businessman and mercenary, a man willing to sell his skills and infrastructure to the highest bidder. Al Simmons knows Jericho doesn't care about Spawn per se, he's just following orders and the money because it seems that Terry had a hefty bounty on his head. They see the footage of Terry getting kidnapped by Jericho. So Spawn tells him get him the locations everywhere Jericho has been for the past 24 hours. And Mark tells Spawn I'll download those in a minute but it looks like he grabbed Terry less than an hour ago. So he zooms in and he gets his license plate and Spawn tells him to track it down and Mark is like okay it'll be a bit of time and Spawn tells Mark yo man hurry up people are dying. Now Mark bristles on it because somehow the pressure has been shifted onto him. But he's also smart enough to understand that Spawn has always seen him as a useful commodity to get intel. So it ain't no big deal. Just you'll get your information when Mark gets the information. He's working as fast as possible. So Mark tells Spawn they're going east about five clicks away. You can be there in seven minutes. As for Terry, hmm, who knows how long he lasts as he gets tortured and beaten. Tell me, says Jericho, if Spawn opened the dead zones, why won't he go in and take the damn throne? Screw you, says Terry. Oh. I'm an emissary for the Exodus Foundation. Do you know what they are? What that means to you? The drugs you'll take when I'm done breaking your knees? The hospitals? The banks that hold your house as a mortgage? They own all of them. So they could take everything from you, Terry. And Terry's dealt with threats like that his whole life. And he was a tough son of a bitch even before the military trained him. And he kicks the car into park. And that vehicle going 40 miles an hour when you put a car in park abruptly, it is not good. <laughs> They crash. Jericho goes out the windshield. Not knowing who's human and who isn't, this desperate move was all he had left if Terry intends to survive. The driver is injured. Now he knows the driver is human, and that is an advantage, Terry. Now, what he learned in Sarajevo and Somalia down a dark, isolated road, Terry's been in situations like this before. And what you do in the next few moments determines whether you'll die or not. And Jericho is pissed. He gets up and looks at Terry as Terry takes a shard of glass and cuts himself loose. You're just a piece you understand, inconsequential, something useful, a tool, one we can use to temper the monster you call Al. I told them we should kill you. They said no, the hell with them. I thought you were wise enough to play your part. I see that's never gonna happen, is it? He lets out the flame and everything goes up in flames, letting him know this is a final showdown and you're gonna burn for all this. Not for your kind, says Terry. Terry had come to Spawn for help before. He wanted to reconnect with his daughter who had disappeared, but he's found secret documents about her and Spawn. He risked everything trying to figure out how all the pieces intertwined, and he'll be damned if some outsider is going to stop him from finding his daughter, because Terry has always thought that if he was ever going to die before his time, that it was going to be for a cause he was willing to lay his life down for. And that's an easy cause when it's about protecting your family. Hey, as a single dad, I can agree with that, no doubt. Jericho puts Terry in a chokehold. You're so in over your head. But in those cases where the good man is incapable of winning himself, there are safety measures put in place. And seven minutes has passed, and this backup came in the form of Spawn. It's a good thing that he isn't good or evil and he doesn't let guilt drive any of his morality because inside of him is hate and it burns strong. A hate for those that prey on the weak, that want to control the innocent and for those who could care less who they hurt to accomplish what they want. You think you could take us all on Spawn? Says Jericho. Spawn opens a portal. You're right. All I care about you is tonight. And with that said, Spawn sends Jericho into the depths of the netherworld. After that, he walks away. Terry follows him. We going back in for Wanda or the priest? And Spawn tells him, they want a king? I'll give it to him. I could be the most vicious king they've ever seen. And none of their gods can save them from my wrath. 
the war of earth begins all hell the king and that's where we end this review of king spawn issue number 18 not to mention the end of the third story arc of king spawn brutal story what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know i like i said between king spawn and gunslinger spawn it is still splitting hairs for me but oh my gosh this story just keeps getting better and better and spawn's wrath and power just keeps going ham on everyone and i'm definitely and thoroughly enjoying it So before we get into this issue, we're just going to talk about previously what happened in King Spawn. Spawn goes head to head with the creature known as the Behemoth, created by the remnants of the Psalms 137 cult. So we go into this panel with New York City, the city is abuzz with the festival. And like this punk right here, he's on a mission and nothing in the world will stop him. Nothing except a kid desperate for a chance to see Santa. And as he's looking at the Santa from the Salvation Army doing the most good, this kid tells him doing the most good for who? I I bet you keep all the cash and this kid bumps into him and hits his eye chest and this punk gets pissed because inside the eye chest a brain comes out of it and all the girl can do is yell out for mommy you stupid cow get out of here and the pedestrians look at him like perhaps good sir you may want to rethink your attitude towards a young lady eat shit old man <laughs> he probably would have said that for dramatic purposes and the girl's like is that like someone's brain you keep your mouth shut and you didn't see anything and he goes back to the man and told him to mind his own business and knocks him in the chin with the ice chest and the brain off ice its recipient is going to be mad mad enough to kill and that's where these two detectives come in they get a call about a brain on the street with no body attached and sam's like this is going to be some shit right here so they go to the crime scene sam and twitch look at the brain and the crime scene isn't particularly bloody since a brain only has so much blood when fully intact so twitch is like these interviews are going to be fun they interview the santa and the santa's like man i only do this gig for cash and that's all i don't even like kids i don't want to be here and this other brother is like yeah he dressed and talk like some punk rocker or something he had a bit of an accent too and they asked the little girl like do you remember anything else says twitch and the little girl's like well the brain looked kind of real so this homeless person talks to sam and twitch and tells him the card someone leaves these cards some lab doing research they get your brain when you're dead here's a business card go talk to them and on that card is the Exodus Foundation. And it's in Midtown, New York. So later, Sam and Twitch interrogate Mr. Merrill, And Mr. Merrill tells him, well, you two must be quite dedicated to your jobs doing all this on Christmas Eve, you know? Twitch's response to working on Christmas Eve is, you know what, sadly, crime never takes a day off. And Sam notices that they have a bit of an infestation problem in the office. But the guy, Mr. Merrill's like, yeah, don't let a few bugs scare you. And as mentioned before, when you called, I assure you what we do here is legal. We we offer very fair compensation to the downtrodden who might wish to donate their brains in the occurrence of their death. And Sam has a legitimate question. He asks him, do you ever think your arrangement might influence some people to commit murder? And Mr. Marvel tells him we're a business detective. Though Sandra, do you see what I'm looking at here? And he's looking at Sam's big ass head. And Sandra says, oh, on it, sir. Detective Burke, you have quite the prominent brow. If you'd like to get details on how to donate for research, we'll pay you quite well. And this pisses Sam off and Twitch is like, yo, man, relax. We're, you know, you're going to get us in trouble. You trying to bribe me, man? And Sam just gets more pissed. Like, look, whatever you guys are doing here, I promise you I'll be back with a ton of warrants and a foot rate is shoved so far up your ass. You might want to put that on your day plan. Duly noted and good afternoon gentlemen says Mr. Marvel. Oh my god look at that head it's a Neanderthal which is code for yo Sam you got a big ass head and this brother is in and he wants to investigate on what goes on in that head of yours kind of a little bit of a dark human here so meanwhile while outside sam and twitch are arguing and twitch is telling sam to calm down and sam's like man give me a break we can't be all boy scouts like you and that brother was mocking me people are getting their heads freaking slashed off on christmas eve and you want me just to go along with that brother's bullshit hell no nah. while in this commotion twitch's phone rings he answers the phone the person addresses him by his name detective twitch avenue a the abandoned building be there in 15 minutes and twitch is like why is that he's waiting who's waiting and twitch is like well we need to go so they arrive to the building 13 minutes later and sam tells him i got you covered how do you want to play it 
and Twitch is like, just follow my lead. So they go up the stairs and they go up to the door and Detective Twitch tells them, yo, NYPD, open up. And then Sam tells him, you see that? It's the same bug we saw at the Exodus office. So they give it one more warning before they kick down that freaking door and do their freaking thing. And once they enter, they see the punk laying disemboweled with the business card. And Twitch notices that this punk matches the description. And Sam notices that this isn't a corporation's hit job. They dumped the body to make it clean. Somebody wanted to make a mess, trying to send some kind of message. And what do you think that message is? Well, whoever it was, looks like they wanted the info on that card to be seen. The Exodus Foundation. That is some serious mind games going on. So 24 hours earlier, that same punk was on the lookout for a hiding spot. And he can't drop the brain of the middle of the street and just go about your business. Plus, he needed to call his employer. He wasn't looking forward to that phone call. And before he makes that phone call to his employer, we see Spawn right behind following his man. And he turns around thinking it was just his nerves. That's all he tells himself. So he makes a phone call. The person answers. And the punk tells the other person, give me the big man or the twins. Because things got a bit messed up tonight. They don't take calls and they don't respond to unprofessional sloppiness. And so the punk tells him, yeah, well, how professional is it going to look when everyone in the city knows what they're doing? So like it or not, you might want to help me out before it comes out. And the guy's like, well, we are not in the help business. You made this bed so you can sleep in it, but I will convey your threat to them. And the punk gets mad like, you son of a bitch, that's not what I meant. And tell them I've got their cooler with their brain in it. I thought they needed that. Now, whose brain is in that cooler? Well, earlier, the item sitting in the cooler was extracted from a college professor. It was a well-timed lunch break attack and a hacksaw, that's all it took. And that's the punk hacksawing the head off the professor's. It ain't no big thing, just another day back in the office. But back in the here and now though, something strange is happening. In a distant room, he sees what he's looking for. He sees the cooler. He also sees something else, and that something else is Spawn. And Spawn asks him in the shadows, who's doing this? And the punk takes out his gun. Whatever you are, you stay right there. That brain right there, it's mine. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna walk out of here. You got that? He opens up the ice chest. Well, he sees a lot of ice but no brain. And then Spawn gets pissed and he merges out of the shadows. I said, who's doing this? Like vengeance, he comes chains flying and snapping at its master's command while the punk skin is cut by the razor sharp edges of his crimson cloak. No answer, says Spawn. Well, he just rips his arms out of his socket. Then I'll deliver my message instead. Tell them Spawn is back. Say it, S uh, Spawn is back. The pain has already made the punk delirious and Spawn's like, yes, it's the last thing the punk sees. So hours later, Sam tells Twitch, I still don't like the stink of all this. Something ain't adding up. And Twitch tells him, well, Exodus isn't breaking any laws, so we can't stop anyone who wants to sell their organs or body parts. Hell, I might even plan to do it myself. And Sam's like, you're going to sell your brain. No, but I don't mind my organs helping someone in need once I'm gone. And Sam, this is too heavy of a conversation for Sam. And Twitch just tells him, what well, I'm just saying I like to help out where I can. And Sam sees it as, look, you're going to cut your body up and let them cut your body up however they want it and just donate it. This is some jackass shit that I'm not ready to hear. Then Sam says, I just hate waiting. I wish we had an ace in the hole or something. And it turns out they do, but they got to be careful what they ask for because their ace in the hole might be Spawn, and Spawn greets him. Evening, boys. And that is the end of this issue of King Spawn, issue number 19. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. I thought Spawn was definitely going to have a lot more vengeance than this. But then again, maybe in issue number 20, we see exactly who was behind all that brain and ice right there. But link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of the other comic books and or rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Before we get into this issue, I could not get this review out yesterday because my voice sounded like crap and though it's a little bit better, it still sounds a little bit like crap, but in the words of Debo, Stop being a bitch and come on! <laughs> I had to see it through and come through for the boys and the girls. Alright, so previously on King Spawn, the Exodus Foundation has been collecting people's brains. Their sinister purpose is still unknown, but Spawn is on the hunt. And the thing is, when people die, a company has been offering to pay for them, pay for their brains. And because of that, there are some that are in a hurry to cash in and get that cash quicker than the 
never mind. I was going to say a joke, but I think I'm going to refrain from it. So like this brother in the sports car right here, driving in a high-speed pursuit, and inside his canister, he has a couple, maybe a few, multiple brains. He's on the phone, and he tells his sister not to worry. He'll get to meet her. But ease up on that mind games, can you? At least until we open her skull. So whoever he's meeting tonight, he plans on opening her skull. But we see that he's being pursued by these cops, and our boy spawn in the back. And the reason why Spawn's pursuing him is because a recent rash of murders led to a track of Spawn leading him to a company called the Exodus Foundation. And with this Exodus Foundation, they're willing to destroy neighborhoods just to pad their profits. Who, among their many divisions, gouged the price of crude oil. They're greedy like that. And now these people at the Exodus Foundation want to control our mind. And because they want to control minds, they've inadvertently drawn unwanted attention. So this guy tells his sister over the phone, he has three brains in the car that he's transporting right now. A judge, an annoying DA, and dad's least favorite CEO. So tell him to have his team winning. He'll arrive soon with their investments. And he asks his sister, what are you doing? So his sister tells him, I'm getting acquainted with your date. She's already here. And he's like, cool. And the sister tells the guy, your date wants me to pass along the message that she wants you to drive safe. Well, drive safe my ass. Spawn is going to make sure that don't happen. And before we go any further into the content, we're just going to take a moment to relish this panel right here because this is pretty badass right here. So with that impact, I'm not sure if this guy should physically and humanly survive that kind of collision. But for the sake of storytelling, we're going to go with it. Spawn tells him to get up. But as he gets up and runs away because he's like, fuck that shit. I'm not dealing with this brother right here. He drops a photo, one that freezes Spawn in his own tracks, giving this guy his only chance to escape. We don't know what kind of photo that is, at least not yet. But elsewhere at the NYPD precinct, Sam and Twitch are talking to Terry about the Exodus Foundation. And Sam is pissed that their encounter in the previous issue, King Spawn number 19, these guys were measuring my damn freaking head like it was some kind of freaking joke, but they were sizing up their pockets at the expense of my head. So Terry's like, well, their nets have gotten bigger. They're sending dreads to kill judges and professors. So that's what the Exodus Foundation is. So Terry reminds Sam and Twitch that they said something when you guys were questioning him they were asking you guys if he believed and twitch is like belief had nothing to do with it especially when you leave a man looking like this and he shows him a picture and terry's like i'll tell you what you should be scared of they got enough resources to do whatever they want and what if that belief maybe that's what they're researching dissecting people's brains hoping to find a way to influence you and twitch is like maybe but what about spawn how does he fit into this and terry's like no clue but if you want to talk to him I can arrange for that for you. Really, says Sam. You making the brothers appointments? And Terry's like, look, man, I'm in no mood for your sarcasm, all right? You want his help or not? Because he's fighting his own wars right now. But I think Terry believes that Spawn is somehow connected. It's the first wave, the infantry, trying to gain ground before the heavy artillery rolls in. And Sam's like, you act like there's some kind of invasion coming. And Terry's like, well, because there is one, a biblical one. And because of that, I have a daughter that is missing and Spawn might know where she is so yes I've been staying close to Spawn because I think Spawn is keeping her hidden from me that's the thing with our boy Spawn he isn't in for anyone's best interest just his own but luckily his interest mostly lines up with the right thing with what we're doing but at heart he is a cold-blooded killer and Sam and Twitch are like yo man some smoke's coming in Spawn's coming in the room you better cut that shit out and Terry's like what man you guys are okay what's up and Spawn comes in and hands Terry the photo. Terry, you need to see this. The picture, that's the picture the one guy left behind. But he shows it to Terry, and Terry is in tears. Where did you get this? From the Exodus, says Spawn. Well, when was that taken? I don't know. And Terry's like, you think they have her? And Sam was like, what are you guys talking about? What's in that picture? It turns out it's Cyan, Terry's daughter. Spawn leaves, nothing to say because the picture speaks volume and he leaves something else behind and Twitch picks up all the paperwork and Twitch realizes that's the guy we interviewed it's his kid Bateman from the Exodus Foundation that's his kid from King Spawn issue number 19 and Terry's like I'm calling for backup because if anyone has touched my daughter if they've done this shit with their head I'm gonna burn this whole freaking city to the ground and Spawn realizes yeah he's right if any suffering happens to Cyan 
and she turns out to be a casualty of this, not only will Terry burn the city down, but Spawn will burn the city down too. And we get this cool gangster panel right here of Spawn overlooking the city. And he overlooks this restaurant called Momo's. It's a restaurant that that kid's dad's company owns. He walks in like he owns the freaking joint. He's safe, but he's not. Bateman has his assassins watching him, making sure that if anyone makes a move, they have tactical position. This is a business deal of some kind. Who's he waiting for? We don't know, but here we see his sister, Tar Marival, his twin, come out the car, about to go into the reunion, about to go in for the meet. So Spawn emerges, comes in, and like Terry said, the brother is a cold-blooded killer. He goes in, handles business, haymakers a guy inward, you can see that jaw dislodging from his mouth. And Spawn's like, yo, man, I did my part, it's on Terry now, and there's no stopping that Terry. That Terry's coming in with that smoke, and he wants that smoke, he's looking for it. So outside, Terry is wired up, but not bricked up, why would he be? But anyways, jokes aside, he receives word from Sam and Twitch, and they tell him, do not make a scene. And Terry's like, shut the hell up, man, you got a daughter, Sam, or what? No, just listen. Nah, I ain't listen, I'm going in. So he goes in with flowers, you know, an undercover kind of thing. And Sam tells him, Terry, I just need you to get an ID on them and get out. Terry approaches a guy and Sam knows Terry ain't listening. So he calls him out one more time. Terry ain't trying to hear that stuff. Terry pulls out a gun, puts it on his face. Where's my daughter? Turns out, Cyan's right next door. I don't know what is up with these people wanting brains aside from them wanting to control minds, but this King Spawn is absolutely gangster. Link in description if you guys wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry also don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com for our other comic books as well as some of our rated comics exclusives so previously on king spawn while following their leads on the exodus foundation the sudden appearance of terry's daughter cyan threatens to derail the investigation so the thing is, now imagine if one of your family members had the powers of a hellspawn, that's Cyan, in some dingy New York City hotel, that's exactly what's playing out here. Terry goes up to Cyan, what are you doing here, get out of here, they're gonna use your brain but Cyan ain't trying to hear all that noise. And Spawn, for now, he's ignoring Terry and Cyan's conflict up above. For now, he has another family member on his mind, which is why he stalks the basement floor of the Exodus Labs. Wanda Blake, his deceased wife, can be brought back from the dead. That's his focus. His battle with Jericho, Disruptor, and the Court of Priests have all led him here because all of them had one thing in common, and that's where the research includes harvesting brains. And this is referencing Spawn issues 267 through 269. So doctors, professors, scientists, all have been victims, but to what end? These dogs come out on the right side of Spawn and the left side of Spawn. Now Spawn, he could kill the animals where they stand, but they're only doing what they're trained to do. And for Al Simmons, a former military man, he understands how that training works. She, these animals have to suffer because of their master training them the wrong way. So Spawn throws the brains at him, a sizable chunk that could keep him occupied and not keep him as hungry for a little bit. He investigates some of the refrigerated drawers. They seem to be perfectly preserved, though it appears they've all been injected with some type of chemical. None of this sits well with Spawn. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. So having tell Terry from the restaurant, Sam and Twitch silently wait outside Terry's hotel room until a sound of struggle comes in. And Sam's like, forget it, man. I'm going in. And Twitch's like, we don't have a warrant, so you can't go in. I don't start with that bullshit with me, Twitch. I ain't in no damn mood, says Sam. And when they go into Terry's hotel room, they see Terry being, you know, powered by Cyan. And you know what? It's just crazy that they have to come in and witness all that. But their job isn't to question the powers or where they come from. Their job is to get answers and get to the bottom of this. Even though they're kind of used to seeing Spawn and his powers, they can't get used to seeing a daughter overpowering her dad like that. So Sam tells Cyan, please put your father down. I need to show you some photos. It takes her another 10 seconds to decide, but she does put her father down. So Cyan's like, what are you going to show me? He shows her the photos and he tells Cyan, these are the kinds of people you're involved with. And she's all in shock about it. She's horrified. And Sam tells her, these are Merrillville's victims. He had you come back to America so they could do that to you. They wanted your brain. Your dad was trying to prevent that. And you might want to cut him some slack because your dad is just being a dad right now. 
So they leave outside the hotel room, and Twitch is like, you think she believed you? Hell if I know. I don't know. So later on, he lets the silence stew, and there's only one thing that sticks in Sam Burke's craw more than anything else, and that's open cases, especially those that have been lingered on for years. In the Exodus case, it's beginning to feel like it's heading to that direction. And usually Sam's more attentive to his surroundings, but he doesn't notice the nearby bystander taking a picture of him. Usually he notices this, but you know, everything seems out of whack to him. Plus he leaves because the coffee sucks. So he continues trying to piece things together, trying to understand why the hell a science lab needs brains. Other organs can be used for like transplants, even dumped on the black markets for a whole lot of cash, but he can't justify any answer for brains. So this woman goes up to him, allegedly, I think that's the woman that took pictures of him, and it is the woman that took pictures of him. So she tells him, I want to show you a photo, to show you the kind of people you're involved with. And he's been falling. He's pissed. Who the hell are you? You think this is funny? You're scum. You and your co entire corporation. Go ahead and laugh. Because I promise when this joke's over, you won't find anything funny about any of this. Keep talking, says the lady. You're making me hot and steamy. Oh, oh, oh. Well, not that kind of hot, Steve. But she's just foreplaying with him. Now, Bateman Marivel arrives. And once again, because Sam is out of way, he doesn't see the brother coming from behind him. He puts him in a chokehold. Do it, fat boy. Release. Try to do... Try Try to get out of this and I'll break your freaking neck, alright? The end times are here, like it or not. He injects his neck, he gets knocked out, and Bateman Merrillville tells him, and those who've turned on God are about to find out we got God on our own right. Right here, right now, on earth. And he knocks Sam out in the cold. But they need to be damn sure Sam's memories of Spawn now play a huge part of that. Brains now Spawn's memory plays a huge part in the Exodus Foundation. What is going on? So some innocent restaurant bystander, waiter or something like that goes outside, sees this all going down, and he gets blasted for being an unbeknownst witness. And that's just the name of the game when it comes to the Exodus Foundation. You got to go, bro. Maravill tells Sam to wake up. I know you hear me. You should have left things alone the way they are. We had Cyan and her powers, but you had to interfere, didn't you? Well, now I've got you instead. And they said you know Spawn, what he believes, and how to influence him. See, he's going to be all the key to what we need. We need to get that into this fat man's head. So give me that brain of yours. And the girl's like, bruh, don't be an idiot. His brain won't survive the trip. You start cutting him open now, it ain't going to make it. Shut up and drive. Because we're we're gonna learn your secret Sammy aren't we and Sam realized he only has one chance to get up out of there so he takes it gets him to the side gauges her eyes out stop the damn car the car begins to swerve before it comes to a screeching halt into this <laughs> building right here but the struggle just begins anew the lady turns around and says stop this isn't what your father ordered Bateman look says Sam. They turn around and they are shocked to what they see because right now they see Spawn with these dogs and these dogs with these brains and Spawn is pissed. Exodus has begun and the new Bible being written says men and women shall turn away from their own salvation. They shall deny God and his savior and in that denial a new world will be made. I mean, even though this uh not not a lot of action this issue but then again a great story in my personal opinion. I absolutely dug it. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below let me know previously in king spawn spawn discovers the exodus foundation's fault of brains meanwhile sam has been taken hostage in an effort to keep spawn at bay so the lay of the land is this exodus has been harvesting human brains attempting to unlock the hidden secrets they may hold to that end they ambush sam burke in hopes of cutting his head open yo man it's just twisted af in this book as for Spawn, he invaded their warehouses, guarded by a pack of junkyard dogs with appetites for brains. So Spawn gives it to them. The canines chase their dinner, uninterested on where it lands. Those are that Sam, this girl, and this dude. Because whatever Exit is using to keep the brains healthy, it makes the dogs ravenous. And Spawn wants to feed them because they're hungry like that, regardless of the collateral damage it may cause. And these dogs go to work on these people. So Spawn asks Sam, you okay? And Sam is like, I'm good, don't worry about me. But those bastards want to lobotomize whoever they want just to serve their corporate scum. And Spawn's like, why'd they come looking for me? I don't know, says Sam. They thought I had the goods on you or something. You're a pawn. They're using you, says Spawn. You think? Well, how about I give him a little payback, says Sam. So as she runs away, Spawn's like, you want me to send the dogs? And Sam's like, nah, I got really good aim. So he shoots and hits her in the back of the leg. She falls down. They call her Lady Madeline. 
Working for Exodus has always given her a keen sense of confidence. Well, throw that confidence out the window, bruh, because that ass is spawns. And Sam's, too. They share like that. They ain't stingy. So until today, ain't no more confidence. She has to get up. And Spawn tells her to get it because you're going to show me what's inside that warehouse and what it means. Then you're going to tell me everything I need to know about Exodus. And then when I'm done, you'll go back to your bosses and lie to them. Tell them you won. I don't care. Maybe then they won't kill you. So meanwhile, for the past 12 hours, Cyan and her father Terry have been picking away at old wombs. Opening up the pent up resentment that has been built up over the past year and a half. The emotions range from abandonment to rage to disappointment, fear and sadness. Literally unleashing a trove of rhetoric all based around a single topic and that topic is the death of Wanda Blake. Her mom and his wife until their standoff is suddenly intruded upon. There's a knock on the door. They go outside. It's empty. No one's in the hallway. And it's very sussy and dark. Who is it, says Terry? They go outside. And it's Tar. Tar Maryville. You skipped out on your date with my brother, says Tar. We weren't done with you yet, Cyan. And that's going back a couple issues back. So Cyan is incredibly powerful. So much so that she's unable to touch anyone without stealing their thoughts. So when Tar reaches for her, she recoils. But Tar has powers of her own. Enough to drop Cyan to the floor. Sending her into convulsions. And Cyan drops the floor. Your daughter's parlor tricks didn't quite work, did they? And Terry's like, what did you do? You fix her now. You hear me? He pulls out his gun. But relax, says Tar Maravell. She's not going to die, Terry. We still need her. But the question is, can we say the same about you? And Behemoth comes out. And we all know Behemoth from a few issues back. He duped it out with Spawn. And Terry don't want none of that smoke. So the creature showed up when Jericho kidnapped Terry. But now it starts to come into focus. Jericho, Exodus, Quarter Priest. They be using all of them like pawns all along like so many others in this war. So Terry asks her, how much time does Cyan have? Enough for you to run and get help. Maybe. So elsewhere, Spawn and Sam drag their hostage back towards the warehouse. And Sam tells her whoever's brains are in there, those are murder victims. Here's what I can tell you, says Lady Madeline. Both of you are screwed. Don't move. She assumes a different position and points a gun at him. But Sam, for his uh, for his height and weight, he moves surprisingly fast for his frame, and he decks her in the face. Screw you, says Sam. Compared to what you tried on me, I'm going soft, so suck it up and keep moving. And she's like, okay, I didn't know you had hands like that. There's a monster down there. Good, says Spawn. That means you take the lead then. And one other thing, as he points the gun at her, you so much as turn around, you're dead. I don't care if you're human, hybrid, or demon. My patience is now over. So do me a favor, ignore everything I just said as Spawn sees a switch and that switch looks like there's something important. I like nothing better than to wipe you and your friends out. Now which way? Up to the right, then down below, says Lady Madeline. I think I'll stick with you for a few more minutes, says Spawn. So he hits the switch and this rumble opens a door down below. Down. They begin their descent and Sam is shocked at what he sees and the smell that it, he has to endure too. How many of them did you bring here? It is a morgue and it's just brutal and this is torturous and this is bloody and this is something that this is not meant for your average kind of eyes, all right? How many did you bring here, says Spawn? Don't remember. It could be thousands, says Lady Madeline. Thousands? All of them eventually dismembered so they could build data link storage information extrapolated from the victim's DNA. Spawn, the thought of it made him so angry because of some corporation's profit margins enraged Spawn on what they're doing to these people. He's done playing nice. It's time to turn the tables. The computer banks must hold some answers and he turns the computers on so he can get more data and footage as to what went down down here. Sam is like, while you're messing with their computers, I'm going to look around, all right? When he does, he tells Spawn there's someone else in the building and they see someone. Sam puts out his gun. Spawn is pissed. As they near, Spawn notices the person isn't moving. They might not even be breathing. Oh my gosh, says Spawn. Her name is Yoko. She was a friend of Cyan's who everyone believed was dead after she disappeared in Japan. Ha ha ha. You have no idea the trouble you stepped into. Somehow, she's the key to unlocking people's minds. The Exodus Corporation, Cyan, T, 
Terry, Wanda, the Scorched, the Thrones of Heaven and Hell. She's the linchpin tying everything together. Spawn's entire perception of what's real and what isn't is about to fall into its proper place. And yo, man, that is one crazy ending. And I don't know what the hell, but it's sinister and it's crazy. Didn't I tell you it was going to be a sinister ending? And that is one sinister ending. And this is Editor Notes of Spawn issue number 276. So previously in King Spawn, Spawn discovers that Cyan's friend Yoku is still alive and has been turned into a living weapon by the Exodus Foundation. So Spawn thought she had died in an unfortunate accident in Japan. He'd gone there to help rescue his best friend's daughter, which he did. But one of the victims of that rescue, part of the collateral damage from that mission was the demise of Cyan's young friend with mysterious powers, Yoku. But now it turns out that the Corporation Exodus, the same entity bent on running Spawn, had been aware of her too. They've been given her extracted brains to wield her powers on and to meld with. And this is a reference to Spawn issue 276 to 283. It appears to have worked. Those brains are now a part of Yoko's being and their anger, their hate towards Spawn is as palpable as her own. So when Spawn knew her, she was Cyan's friend in the form of a ghost. She she had tried to protect Cyan from a criminal segment of Japan's underworld. In the end, she couldn't. She feels Spawn abandoned Cyan in Japan. So why she feels, so why does she have to die for Spawn's mistake as she unleashes all these ghosts onto Spawn? She loves Cyan as a sister. So if we go back to Japan last year, Yoku says she would have done anything to protect Cyan. From the scientist, from the demon Shisumu who killed her first, then you came spawn and you were jealous jealous as cyan becoming more powerful than you and when you killed my murderer you thought you freed me no 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 as i was ascending to the light you didn't free me you punished me i thought i was going up everyone who knows you who trusts you they won't get rewarded you know that they all just be punished just like me as she falls to her demise and falls to her demise as she does how do you think that feels says spawn back in present time yoku and the ghost she's devoured form into a single union then they shatter themselves into glass implanting their shards in as many possible places on spawn's body as they can burying deep inside him where now he can feel their pain he's fought hundreds of times against supernatural forces but as a trained military man he's always been far more effective in physical battles but now he's susceptible to those forces when buried inside them they want him to be his own enemy this is a whole different mental battle that spawns dealing with get on your knees spawn because this is something you got to be dealing with but from the shadows sam burke watches spawn struggling sam doesn't understand the context of what he's hearing but he knows he needs to help he sends a ping that he's being trapped and he sends a pin to sam's location so when sam receives a ping moments later he gets it twitch says terry i could use some help get in the car are you okay by the way says twitch i'll survive says terry can you drive i need you to get me to the exodus foundation they've got cyan this is a reference to the previous issue so somehow they knew where they were tar and some big ass dude they came and grabbed her and he couldn't stop him in time so Terry's pissed. Don't you dare hurt his daughter. You know that, right? So Twitch looks at his phone again, and he sees Sam Ping. And Twitch is like, I got a better idea. I think I know where Cyan's at, says Terry. Oh, so turns out that Ping and Cyan's location may have a correlation with one another. So most cops at his precinct think Detective Burke is almost fearless. But Sam knows that fearlessness is mostly a survival tactic. He asks Spawn if he's okay, and Spawn's like, I just need a few minutes, man. I am in so much pain right now, dealing with some stuff, dealing with some juju I ain't never dealt with before. And Sam's like, don't worry, bruh, I got your back. And Sam intends to survive to get through this. So using deadly force against the aggressive attacker, Yoku, he shoots her. Boom, boom, boom. And it goes through holes in, inside of her, and it hurts. Now the ghost turned to Sam, and he has no idea, though, how to deal with the ghost. Still, he's willing to put his life on the line. Spawn, what's my move from here, says, says Sam. This is some freaky stuff, but it's too late. The hordes extend, and as Spawn is struggling to fend them away, and these ghosts are scratching at Sam, crawling up on Sam, and all he could do is scream, and what possible chance 
does Detective Burke have to survive? Especially since Yoku has somehow made a miraculous recovery. When are you going to listen, says Yoku. Her eyes turn red. You see the holes inside of her midsection? I was her friend. She needed me. She needed my protection from the evil like you. All Sam could do is hold his damn breath as she advances and he's levitated up in the air with all these ghosts. There's a darkness inside of you, said Yoku. She puts her thumb over his eye, bleeds it shut. A black space where evil can hide. A space that needs to be stripped from your being. She pulls him to the hole in her chest and it's not the kind of comfort that you would think when our heads are being pulled to the chest. No, 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 no. It's a people. A look to look at the last time he was truly scared when he was eight years old and still innocent. We go into this flashback with Sam's dad beating his mother to the day he remembers when fear washed over him and where he first learned how to hate something or someone. She should have left him the rot, says Sam. Why'd you let him do those things to you, says Yoku. And to her, and all Sam could do as an eight-year-old little boy is watch his dad womanize his mom, abuse her. Why, says Yoku. Why didn't you save her? Oh gosh, why you gotta take off the belt? And she whacked him in the face, reliving that trauma. She did everything she could, and you failed her, says Yoku. Spawn grabs Terry by the shirt. What I'm wondering is how deep of a connection you really have with them. Because Exodus, Psalm 137, they both need to corrupt and control others for their bullshit to continue. How loyal are you, says Spawn? You know, retain Sam from getting whooped in the belt like that. Oh, she's quite loyal, actually. And the raspy voice belongs to Mr. Merrivale, who has brought along his own trusted entourage of his daughter, Tar, their servant, Bohemoth, and most importantly, Cyan, who the Bohemoth is holding. We're the ones that freed Billy Kincaid, who released Jason Wynn. You see, Hellspawn, technology and the supernatural are not as separate as you think. They're both tools to take advantage of when needed. So, of course, we rescue young Yoku here when you abandon her, giving her access to the brightest minds we collected. All those brains are inside of her, and that's how you build power, one tiny step at a time, regardless of who it might hurt. Because capitalism could be such a beautiful thing, manipulate investors to give us the seed money for us to barter with the fate of this world. Like your dead zone spawn, they're an important piece to all this, says Yoku. You do understand now, Spawn, right? And back in the outside, Terry and Twitch look inside and they're like, you see what I'm saying? Yep, that's my daughter, says Terry. We gotta go in. My thoughts exactly. So they go in. But above, one of the venture capitals Maryville spoke about watches as his investments are about to go through the roof. Money's about to be made in more ways than one. And we see these red eyes just laughing all the way to the bank as more death is about to come. And that is the end of this issue of King Spawn, issue number 23, where Spawn goes from Hunter to the Haunted and his deadly battle for survival. I don't know what the hell is going to happen here, but Spawn, I think you got to run for your money on this one. And this is about to go down. I can't wait for further issues of King Spawn issue number 24 and beyond. So before we get into the issue, previously on King Spawn, Spawn and Sam have been surrounded by the forces of Exodus Corp. Little does everyone know that reinforcements in the form of Terry and Twitch are about to kick the door down. So just a quick recap, an Exodus Corp warehouse near the Hudson River where Tar Merrivale and her father and the monster behemoth have cornered Spawn. At least so it appears. But Spawn, that's where he discovered Yoko, who was once dead, now she is risen. She is the conduit to the channel to the nightmares of New York City. And Sam Burke, caught in the middle of some biblical scrum, is just in the middle of it. But while outside, someone else watches as we clearly see the point of view of that person watching, but we won't know who that is. Though it appears that Spawn is cornered, that person whoever is watching has a sadistic smile on his face. Even though we can't see it, his smile is sadistic. Just take my word for it. Because he knows that Spawn is far from cornered. And Spawn attacks the older Melville, smashing him into the glass. Yoko is being launched into the behemoth, and Spawn's power is at its very height, at its very peak, but he's not realizing that's exactly what Tar had wanted from him. She wanted to expend as much of his power as possible. She needed his anger on full display so her kiss of death could consume him and consume as much of his energy as it would allow. Tar sees this as an act of love, sharing with these all-powerful beings what it's like to feel vulnerable, to feel human again. 
Because as hidden wars play out across the globe, humanity will soon find out that what might actually save them is a small dose of love scattered across their battlefields. So Yoko approaches Cyan, she puts her fingertip on Cyan and she yells out her name. Cyan wakes up and yells out Yoko because they had a connection back in Spawn issue 200 even though editorial notes are not in there. But they're two spirits tied to one another, young women who trusted no one back in Japan. But somehow they found each other. So Yoko asks Cyan, do you remember? Cause I do. I see us in Japan, you were running from them before, you unlocked them, your powers, they couldn't stay hidden, and you avenged my murder. You made them pay, and that freed me. And I prayed that she stayed, Cyan, but that wouldn't give me peace, because the reason why they didn't give me peace is because the Disruptor and the Exodus Corporation, all of them have been using me to channel all these brains for their nefarious plot and their sadistic plot. But elsewhere in the dark, Tar Melva is done with Spawn and her kiss of death, and she tells Behemoth he's all yours, and Behemoth has his moment of triumph when he goes up to Spawn from behind, claps him up in the air, and claps him down to the ground face first, and throws him to the side like some kind of rag doll that means nothing to him. But little does he know, Spawn's enemy have known about the existence of Hell Spawns for centuries, and very few of the faction leaders or warriors have ever come face to face with one. And Behemoth is one of them. He's rarely came across Spawn. So what that actually means is he doesn't know what Spawn is truly capable of. And Spawn tells Behemoth, look at me and look at me real close. Like a ghost, Spawn allows his shadows to engulf him, to hide him, so he can plan his assault on the next attack. But before he does that, outside the warehouse, Twitch and Terry are looking upon all this happening and unfolding. So Terry tells Twitch, even though they're both confused about all this because this is supernatural stuff that they're not quite used to, or maybe they are, but it's just some it's just crazy stuff what's happening here. Human brains, supernatural fights, and behemoth. Yeah, so Terry tells Twitch, ready on my count, two, one, and Terry and Twitch enter guns blazing. Twitch tags Marivel on the shoulder. Terry grabs his daughter Cyan and tells her, I'm getting you out of here. And Cyan's like, well, what about Spawn? Don't worry about him. He'll take care of himself. Terry shoots out the light and it all goes dark. And taking care of himself is exactly what Spawn's about to do. So if his enemies want to torture Spawn and maim him and control him, okay, that's okay because he's okay with that because he knows he can deal with that. But he doesn't like when his enemies use the innocent and the vulnerable as tools towards their agenda. And that's when Spawn's anger reaches its peak. So he tells Tells him, huh? Exodus, that's what you guys call yourself, the Exodus Foundation? How ironic a word you choose, because Exodus is the second book of the Bible. The word means to depart. To scholars, it means the departure of this world to another. For Spawn, it's about to mean extinguished from existence, and he goes after the behemoth. And when he's done, they'll know it was never a contest, and that the result was never in doubt. Spawn goes to work on behemoth, impels him with his own fist, and tells behemoth in the act of superiority, tells him, you don't even understand the things that you've woken up do you and pushes him down to the side onto Tar Melver. So Tar Melver has to get this big behemoth up off of her and she's like ah oh, hell no I'm going after Spawn now. So is it delusion? Is it insanity? Whatever it is the villains still attempt to press their attack towards Spawn. So Cyan was like Yoku you cannot stand by and idly watch all this violence go down but she does. So Spawn knows when Tar Melva gets up, he has to keep his distance from her because he knows he can't allow Tar to put her lips on him again. And not in that kind of way where it's like lip locking, like high school prom kind of kissing. No, nah, this is a kiss of death we're talking about. So when Tar Melva yells out Yoku, the reason why she does that is because for all this time they've been trying to make her their slave since resurrecting her. Forcing her to endure the invasion of so many wicked souls in her mind, then they wanted her to entrap them to make those souls her slaves, to continue the pattern of oppression into the next decade. But yet, seeing Cyan has reminded Yoku of the last time she felt like someone, the last time she felt still human, that she somehow still cared about her even if she was half dead. Cyan was that catalyst for Yoku. So Yoku looks at Tar Melvin tells her, hey, you know what, she's paid her price. And Spawn's like, okay, well, you and I are not done yet. What about us? And Yoku tells Spawn, we do nothing. You and I are done. So, but minutes later, Yoku shows Spawn the cameras that they're connected to throughout the world with the faithful zealots of the Exodus Corp, including 
Jericho. And Jericho turns around looking at the camera and, and tells Spawn, you knew we made contingency plans. Because of you, we're all mobilized. Now, Exodus, Revelations are both waiting for you, thanks in part to exiling me into the dead zone, Spawn. He calling him out and tells Spawn, there's a whole lot more to the story than you think about. So Spawn looks at Jericho, he's like, you were sent there to die, so shut up, bruh. And Jericho's like, actually, we think it's you humans that should suffer the same fate not me so but before jericho complete his sentence and continue on he is grabbed from behind by behemoth and that is it the camera goes black spawn looks at tara melver's father and tells him you took this girl then teased us about her mother returning now you're threatening earth that's some bull jive and to what end so he responds with a hey, look don't 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 come at me like that a flood is coming you either accept and join us or this planet drowns like the tales of noah's ark so Spawn's like, man, enough of this shit. Stop threatening me. Stop threatening and just do it. Tell your bosses and show me how tough they really are. So now run, little dog. So Sam looks at Spawn like, really? You're just going to let him go? And Spawn's like, no, not really. I'm going to hunt him later because he'll lead me straight to the head of their pack. But before Merrillville can do that, he's also running away from another threat. And that threat is the one that just murdered him as his head just plops to the ground. So sadly, Spawn's group barely reacts to this as they've all grown used to the atrocities of war. They're used to this as disgusting as it may be just seeing a dead man's head all bloodied out to the ground. So Twitch is like someone's hiding out there and Spawn's like, I know. He's another I've been hunting and he approaches a large shadow right there. So with a calm smoke is lit, matches are not needed for this guy. And he tells Spawn, good evening, Simmons. I suggest you say goodbye to your friends. I'm gonna need you for a little while. And where we're going, most of them wouldn't survive anyway. Hell, we might not survive either. And that is the end of this issue of King Spawn issue number 24. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. I always felt the violator was always at play here because even when Spawn defeats him, he comes back stronger and more sadistic than ever. And I can't wait to see what the next issue has in store for us. Before we get into the issue, previously in King Spawn, the Exodus Foundation's secret laboratory has been shut down by Spawn. Unfortunately, a visit by a clown means Al's problems are just starting. And before we go any further into the content, I'd like to give a shout out to my boy, Thomas Bridges, Talek84. He's been a longtime supporter of us on Whatnot. When we started Whatnot, we haven't been doing Whatnot for a while, but give us a follow on Whatnot. In about a month or two, we will get back to it. And also, if you shoot us a DM and you got some drip and you're a top G supporter of the Rated Comics YouTube channel, which all of you are by liking and subscribing to this channel, hey, you know what? You guys deserve a shout out too. So this is our thanks to you. Now let's get back into the content. So as Spawn and Clown do each other a stare down, Clown is like, come on, you're not just going to stare me down, are you? Surely you've got something to say. Well, Spawn does, but Spawn's not willing to give this mortal enemy a single word of his acknowledgement. He'll engage when he's ready. So the two of them have gone through all this already. And this is going back to Spawn issue number 343. Spawn was disinterested before, and he's disinterested now. And what this is pertaining to is Clown wants the throne of hell, but Kalishiosha in the previous issues is in hell, and he's claiming that throne, or he wants to claim that throne. But before he can claim that throne, he has to make allies and start a whole war, and it's all out. But before, Caw can claim that throne, Clown wants it for himself. So Clown tells Spawn we're wasting time here. Every second we're on Earth, Kalisiosha is another step closer to Hell's throne. And Spawn just continues to stare him down like, I don't give a damn. So Clown's like, okay, I need to incentivize you, so I guess I'm about to try a different tack on you. Your friends over there, tell him to leave. And Spawn just looks at him like, I'm staring you down some more, bro. Uh-uh. So Clown tells him, okay, they'll be the first ones I hurt. That's a promise, not a threat. The first to react is Yoku with guttural noises filling the night air. And then she tells Clown, I'll serve no one. And Twitch is like, Terry, you gotta control her. So Cyan is the one that reacts second. Say the word, Al, we've got your back. And Clown is like, come on now, this can't be your Vanta arm you've been putting together, is it? Kaliostro, you understand, will slaughter them the moment he lays eyes on them. I don't give a shit what happens to them, but you might. So your next move is on you, Simmons says Clown. So Yoku charges forward and Clown's like, ah, let me give you a little push. And so with the casual gesture of his hand, Clown engulfs them all in a cocoon of ionic shockwaves, paralyzing each of them while vibrating their bodies so they feel like they're about to explode, blanketing them in a searing, blinding light. They just can't take it no more. They're in pain and Clown's enjoying it. 
I know how much you despise the light, Simmons. How much it hurts. That seed of vampire blood that's in you will be your downfall someday. But for now, I'll make someone else my example. So Clown locks his eyes on Yoku as he increases her vibrational frequency higher and higher and her nose is starting to bleed until she literally explodes and splats all over the place and Cyan could just be like, yo man, she's splatting worse than diarrhea on a Sunday. But anyways, now tell your ducks to get the fuck out the way. Yoku was half dead already, says Clown. The next one will be a fully human, so don't mess with me. That's what happens when you mess around to find out, right? So Spawn knows he has no choice but to follow Clown's orders. He tells them all to go. Unable to process what they've all just witnessed, they all walk away in shock. So Twitch just tells them like, what, we can't just leave him here? That's it, we just go? Yes, says Terry. They'll be long gone by the time you go back there anyway. Now be good cops and no exodus to the cross. Well, what about you two, says Sam? We'll be fine, says Terry. And Sam hands Cyan a gun and he tosses it to her, but she's confused as to why does Sam think I need a gun? So Terry tells Cyan, take my hand, we're getting you out of here. And Cyan's like, I can't, but I'm not leaving Al back there. I can't do it. And Terry's like, we don't have a choice. Al and Clown travel in the shadows. They can go anywhere and we can't keep up with that. And Cyan's like, he killed my best friend. Clown killed Yoku. I don't care where he goes. So Terry tells Cyan, I'm with you, but I promise. Al has a plan. It's why he sent us away. If he needed help, he would have let us know that he needed help to deal with the clown. I know where to find some others who are helping clown. We can squeeze them for info. And they're all human. And Cyan has that smirk in her face like, aw crap, it's about to go down. Where it's go Let's go, let it go, let it do. So back to where the real party's at, and we see Yoku splashes all over the floor. Clown tells Spawn it seems like you've been needing more help and more help these days. That's not the big tough guy Al Simmons I used to know. He used to always like to fly solo. What happened? Did things change? Though it's curious why you haven't bothered to ask about my newly reformed transformation. Why I'm not that dwarfish pain in the ass like I used to be, and that's that pain in the ass at least would like to torture you. And Spawn gets up and it's like, it's because I just don't give a damn. Clown will always be one thing to Spawn and only one thing and that is it. And that's the person who murdered his wife as Spawn does nothing but sees red at this point. The sight of Clown brings out the worst of them. Kind of like Starbucks pickup line when I do a mobile app order on a Monday morning. It brings out the worst in me. <laughs> I'm joking around. But jokes aside, nothing else matters to Spawn. Until he avenges her death, he'll never breathe peacefully again. Instead, he'll be filled with that hatred so focused that very little else will matter. And the worst part is, Al knows he's better than that. That humanity needs his actions to be calm, calculating, and decisive. With so many warriors of heaven and hell strewn across the globe, the world needs Spawn to protect billions of souls, not just the one closest to his heart. But right now, he is failing in that task as he throws his full arsenal of his symbiote at his most despised enemy. Chains, razor tip, cape spikes like a hurricane. They attack. Clown, though, seems unfettered by it. In fact, he's almost calm. And Clown's like, you think my changes are merely physical? That mistake could get you hurt one day. I mean, real bad. Who you think invented your costume, Al says Clown. It was me. I was there at the start. So was Cog. That's why I'm telling you that he can't reach the throne first. So, and then Clown pulls it back and lets him know what kind of power he's made of. Take your hate for me and churn it off. So Clown tells you you could come back for me after we stop Cogliostro. Because you're not the only one that controls your symbiote spawn. So Clown's powers, like some kind of ancient mummy, Spawn's body is tightly wrapped by his own cape, then reinforced by his own chains. And Clown's like, <laughs> I could suffocate you right now, but then you wouldn't be much use to me. Boom! I still need you to return us back to hell. And this is just one of those like threatening punches, like I'm gonna put you back in line, all right? You see, you want me on that throne, Simmons, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I don't care about Earth. But Cogs, he wants to dominate your planet. He wants to rule it. But suddenly, from behind, a voice comes in. Like I said, I don't give a shit. I only care about one thing. That's to see you suffer. As he puts his necroplasmic energy around Clown, Clown goes to the ground. 
Like Wanda suffered, I want to see you suffer too, says Al. As he utters her name, a trigger releases inside of him, unleashing a fury that's been bottled up for far too long. Now, those emotions have their target to focus on, and Spawn just goes to work on him. Haymaker after Haymaker after Haymaker after Haymaker. Yo, if you watch King Spawn issue number three, this is exactly what he did to Billy Kincaid, where he just beat him up to like Billy Kincaid pudding and sludge. But Clown, he's a lot tougher than that with his recent transformation, which was explained and I believe Gunslinger Spawn four, five, or six, which we did cover that on this channel. So like a tired boxer, Spawn tries to rally more stamina. So does his opponent. Oh, the throne. It'll augment his power, says Clown. Do you get that? Cog will be near invincible. He'll use that to lord over your planet. So Spawn gets all like, so I should just let you sit on the throne and said, that's some bullshit. Yes, says Clown, because believe it or not, I've got more enemies I hate more than you, and none of them live on this planet. The traitors in hell, I'll be busy wiping them out for decades. Earth, it's nothing to me, says Clown. So Clown gives Spawn an ultimatum. You're going to have to choose who's a bigger danger to those you care about. Is it me or is it Cog? Because if it's Clown, he doesn't give a damn about Earth. But if it's Cog, Cog is going to be more powerful or more imminent. And definitely damn near invincible. So yes, if I get the throne's power in time, I'll be back for you, says Clown. We're not done here, but you know what? That could be decades from now. Cog will be way more immediate. For me, it'll be decades from now. So you'll have time to prepare for that. Right now, though, Cog is your more imminent threat. Spawn goes face to face to Clown in a power move and tells him, I owe you nothing. You're on your own as he walks away and disappears into the shell. Because Clown, you just can't trust him. But at the same time, should Spawn trust Clown, given the scenario, given the context, what do you guys think below comment below let me know what do you guys think of the comic book also link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or some of our other rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection support the art support the industry lastly this review is sponsored by coffee so if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee link in description or donate to the super thanks but the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to rated comics youtube channel thank you again for watching until next time